Welcome back to 1010's Ten Podcast. My name is Michael with Adam and Robbie. And we have a gift from our studio sponsor this week. Oh, it's James. from our studio sponsor? Yes, it's from oh, Kanga Motorsports. Man. It's from James. Is it food? Uh, it is food. Fucking it. What? But it, uh, so did it come from Australia? It, it did come from Australia. Oh. As you guys may know, if is you it follow Vege- James. It's Vegemite. It's not Vegemite. I have no idea what that is. I don't either. I it's, like, uh, it's like hummus? No. No. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's salty and it's like a paste and you put it on stuff. <laughs> it's kind of like, like hummus. You, you use it like peanut butter? Like I hummus. Think? No, it tastes a lot different than hummus. But it, is it textured like hummus? It tastes like veggies, uh, I assume. It may be. Well, I've never had Vegemite. Neither have I. <laughs> it's a thick black Australian food spread made from leftover brewer's yeast oh. extract and various vegetable and spice additives. That's what Vegemite is. Sounds like hummus. So the leftover, <laughs> the leftover stuff from beer they used basically to uh, make a paste yeah, that you spread on. I want to try it now. Thanks. Well, Dr. James, maybe he has Vegemite. We do have people yeah, who he listen. Has to have Vegemite. We, we have a, a surprisingly large contingent of down underers. Yeah, I bet they have some Vegemite. We're gonna get some of blasting us on the, on, the, <laughs> on the group like more morons because we don't know about Vegemite. You don't know about Vegemite. <laughs> I know it's very. Uh, Divisive. Oh, you love it. Some people yeah. love it, yeah. Yeah. Like hummus. I knew that. No, so, I'm in the not so much on the hummus category. I, I, I don't mind hummus. It's all right. Uh, candy. He actually sent us something nice from what I can tell. He sent us uh, candy race cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat all those. I assume, That's fantastic. I assume this is to uh, soften the blow from some of the other things that we've received from other people on this show. But uh, are, you yeah. actually, are you actually gonna eat that? Yeah, I'll, I'll have one. Yeah, sure, why not? He's gonna have to at work out extra Every, hard everything's tomorrow. Everything's in, in kilojoules, so I don't know how much sugar this is. <laughs> it's not many. If it's in kilojoules, it's not many. It may contain traces of peanuts and other nuts. The candy has nuts in it. So, handsome to Adam. Yeah, don't be bogarting there. Oh gosh, it's so far away. Melba's. Oh, those are adorable. Yeah, little candy race cars. Sweet. Not bad. I'm excited so anyway. about that. They're gummy, which is not helping me talk on the podcast <laughs> no, at all. <laughs> Very sorry. I'm almost there. I'm getting through it. But anyway, that was much more pleasant than some of the other things we've received lately. That was so, nice. That's thank putting, you to James. That's putting it lightly. Thank you Probably to James. Probably are going to fight over these later. Oh, there's no fighting. They're mine. <laughs> He's going for another batch of them. <laughs> He's reaching over there and grabbing them now. Actually, nice. actually, maybe this is a different form of sabotage. Robbie's not going to be able to talk because he's going to have gummies uh-huh. in his mouth the whole time. Maybe it's like those... Uh, the sugar-free gummy bears oh, on I'm Amazon? Gonna, yeah, I'm going to get, like, the runs. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. if you eat a whole, or, like, a bunch of those, you're violently sick. Yeah, you can buy, like, a 10-pound bag of them, too, so don't do that. Don't do that. Although, it's worth going to Amazon and reading the reviews. Just for but. sure. <laughs> worth it. So, anyway, thank you, James, for that. Um, as Adam starts to try to chew on that, I'm going to kick it over. No, I'll, I'll and wait. Do, do Adam's opener presented by Factor Fabrication. All right. So today, I'm going to combine two of our favoriteest things in the whole wide world. Cars and conspiracy theories. Well, I got one of the things I like. <laughs> conspiracy theories, Yeah, right? I know. I hate cars. They're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> more of that later, I'm sure. <clears throat> anyway, so Jalopnik had, you know, they do these like uh, post of the day things where they ask people and then they make another post about it the next day about the best answers or whatever. So there's a couple of them in here that are kind of lame. And so we'll just skip over those for the most part because who cares? But there's a few in here that are kind of funny and worth talking about. So first one I really enjoy is that some someone's theory about the Schwanz man. They're a conspiracy theory about the Schwanz man? Yes. Yeah, so you know who the Schwanz man is, right? I don't know that everybody listening knows what a Schwanz man is. So Schwanz, Schwanz, Schwanz man, Schwanz men? Schwan, Schwanz men? Sure. Are Women too? Well, Schwanz yeah, okay. person? Schwanz persons to be but politically see, correct. correct. Uh, they are, they deliver what is frankly slightly overpriced frozen foods. It's a convenience fee for them I'm, driving to your house. <laughs> overpriced frozen foods that are it's pretty good. I mean, their ice cream is pretty Pretty bomb. But this was like a big and, deal. And I grew up on their chicken yeah. patties. Yep. This is a big like, deal like 20 years ago, right? Yeah. They still yeah. do it. So the the uh, the conspiracy theory is they're, they're actually a front for running drugs and money. Smart. 
<clears throat> so it goes, you, the guy goes on to say, look at their trucks. Some of these are identical to armored trucks, giant diesel engines, huge tires, overbuilt suspension, the whole nine yards. They do have smaller trucks and vans. And those are only for the ones. Those are the only ones you see delivering. The armored trucks are always moving on highways, but I've never seen one stopping in any town. What better cover? So what he's saying is that the big truck, the big Schwann's trucks right, don't ones. stop anywhere. No. They're because just armored they're vehicles full of drugs full and of money. Full of drugs and money. Okay. But the front is they actually do deliver right. frozen treats it's to little legi- old ladies. It's a, it's a legitimate business. But it's but also it's, it's it's just a front. It's just like how all the uh, the the trash companies in New York City are owned by the mob. Yeah. It's the same thing. Oh, well, that's just common knowledge. Yeah, everybody knows that. But yeah. This, this how else am I supposed to get rid of my dead bodies? You got to go to the mob. Right. And it's convenient that they're also the trash men. Right. I'm sure there's a, an additional fee for dead body disposal, but that's fine. It's a small Just price. like small to get rid to, of my sticks. It's a small price to pay thing. to make a problem go away. <laughs> and it rhymed. <laughs> Robbie said that too many times. <laughs> do you say this daily? <laughs> do you say this in your normal life? Yeah. It's, Maybe it's, not in relation to you know making people disappear, but just yeah, small it's, price it's, to pay it's to make a problem go away. It's a convenience fee or it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fee to make problems go away. Fair enough. I try not to dig into Robbie's personal life too much because it gets weird. It gets to a point where I don't want to know. Anything. It gets real weird. So more on car point. Uh, this guy claims, and I think he's actually right about this one. He claims that uh, GM was hamstringing Fiero development to prevent cannibalizing Corvette C4 sales. Uh, goes on to claim that uh, the last gen of Fiero was actually faster around the track, even with the shitty engine they gave it. And that if they would have put like a supercharged 3800 or even a turbo quad four in that car, it would have been you know, light years ahead of it. Sure. And I don't think he's wrong about that. Uh, no, I would agree. I'm Cause sure that car right. did always feel like a bastard child. Oh, ab- absolutely. And that second generation of it, that facelifted iteration of it is a pretty good looking car. Like the, uh, I would say late eighties. I think they made them into nineties. So what Robbie's got pulled up there is the first gen and that's okay, but it's not great. But the later one, I think, looks good. I have no idea what... Is that the later one? I think that's a later one there. I don't yeah. know anything about Fieros. I don't I know, know, I know that they're kind of like... No. They're kind of like MR2s, but not really. They're like a worse MR2, frankly. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, so they put the Iron Duke in it, which is a terrible motor. And mm-hmm. then you could get that 2.8 liter V6, that pushrod V6 that GM made, which was also a terrible motor. They put those in S10s as well. So, but I think he's right. For sure. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's just like the whole thing about the Cayman. I mean, the oh, Caymans absolutely. have gotten a lot better. But absolutely. When the Caymans, Caymans and, and even Boxsters yeah. are purposely toned back, toned down and dialed back to not be better than the 911. Yep, most definitely. So one that I've seen many, many times before, people claim is real and is absolute bullshit. I'm convinced of it. The fuel vaporizer. Do you know what this is? No. Tell me about the fuel vaporizer. So this is a carburetor. Okay. That uh, you run fuel through a heating element before entering it into the carburetor so that it enters as a vapor and thereby automatically gives you 200 miles to the gallon no matter the situation. 200. 200. I've, I've heard of this theory. It was, it was thrown around when I was in college. So the guy, so a guy actually, there is an inventor of this device and it was patented and he never claimed that it did any of these things. And he even went as far as to say that all of these insane claims ruined all of this thing. People were breaking into his shop to steal it. People were threatening to kill him, you know, because he took a buyout from big oil to prevent this from being released to the public. I, rem- I remember that part blah, of the conspiracy blah, theory. Blah. They, were, they were saying that, like, yeah, he invented it, but the government bought it and he can't right. sell it. Yeah. So he had intentions of, you know, this thing having an actual viable purpose. And so people ruined it. In the late 20s, Model T's actually came with a version of this because it allowed you to run um, really shitty fuel, low-grade fuel, basically, Okay, which at that time, essentially, what you were getting was kerosene. Okay. And so that gave them the opportunity to run that kind of fuel more efficiently. Okay. But... And so he just tried to... I think he invented this on the hopes that there was maybe, maybe some level of usefulness or something like that that he could maybe sell to manufacturers, but it didn't 
accomplish anything great enough to matter. And then fuel injection came along, and I don't think it mattered at all. For those of you who think it's a real thing, the patent's expired. Go build it. Prove me wrong. That'd be awesome. It's really what it boils down to. So, But I've seen it multiple I've seen multiple times where people claim this is a thing. It gets passed around on Facebook yeah, occasionally. YouTube videos. Are on YouTube well. videos. If you want to dive into some crazy shit, it's out there. So what's the rationale then? If it turns it into a, a vapor, you can use less fuel? Yeah, I guess they're, they're, I mean they must it's more combustible. You're you're not, you're wasting less. Okay. You're, you're you're using all of it if it's a vapor. Right. Sure. But I mean <laughs> yeah. it just so so what you're saying is is if I use this vaporizer heater to warm up the fuel but then I wrap my AC condenser coils around the intake and make the air cold It'll be super efficient. Exactly. It'll be Robbie. the most efficient vehicle but That's all like time. three or 400 miles to the gallon. Genius it's right a there. New, it's a new conspiracy yeah. theory. Genius. So I, I suppose I should insert this here. These yeah, are conspiracies. Should. These are not necessarily based in fact. Fair oh. enough. This is from YouTube University is what I you're just, telling me. I just, want, <laughs> I just want everyone out there to know that they may or may not be based in fact. So That's fair. Uh, another interesting one. Uh, this guy claims that there is a gentleman's agreement between GM and Ford concerning their trucks in the 70s. They colluded together and agreed that Ford could have the long super cab pickup market to themselves while GM kept the suburban market to themselves and that the crew cab was fair game for either side. Okay. And then it fell apart in the 80s. Okay. I don't know. Do For- you have any inform- So Ford never really had a suburban style vehicle. True. I don't know what super cab means. Do they have a? Because f- crew cab. Well, no, but is I think that, so. I, is that like long box then? No. In in the seventies, Ford made something called a super cab, but I don't know what that like. So is that like a four door long box truck then? Or, I'm not really sure what that. I think so, but didn't GM had four door pickups? I mean, none of that stuff. Could you get them as a long box? Uh, I think you could get them on a frame. I think they all came on frames. Well, what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying is, I think it was like a work truck. It's a, pack, weird, you know that's what a mean? weird truck. Is that a super cab? That's supposedly a super cab. Okay. So well, it just looks like a really long truck to me. It's an excessively long truck. It does look really ridiculously long. It's like a, limo, it's like a limousine. <laughs> it is ridiculous. The cab's not that long. big. But my point is, but think, it is a four think, door, think right? about the road. No. That's it's not? not? No, it's a, it's a two door, but it's oh, a, so that's an extended a, cab. Yeah, it's an extended cab. Oh, so maybe that's what it is. GM got the Suburbans, Ford got the extended cabs, and both of them could have the four doors. I think I don't know. That seems like a really dumb theory. I don't see the point. I don't. I th- I don't think that it was so much that there was a gentleman's agreement as that's just how it happened to work, and somebody decided that there for sure was a conspiracy involved. Has to be. I don't know. Just well, probably purely because Ford didn't. That make they a certainly SUV. colluded. Apparently, that's the term that we use now. Collusion? Oh, yeah. Collusion. Collusion. Yes. For me, I just don't see really any advantage to anybody but GM. Yeah, like I said, not always based in fact. Nah, not buying it. What's next? Uh, Cash for Clunkers program only existed to remove non-computerized and therefore harder to stop or control vehicles. (laughs) That's getting pretty deep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not buying it. I also know I'm fairly certain that if one were to break down the numbers that a large percentage of the cars that went out with Cash for Clunkers were computerized. I would imagine, yes. Because by the time that existed, a majority of the non-computerized cars weren't being used as daily drivers. No. Cash for Clunkers wasn't that long ago. <laughs> that wasn't while Obama was in office. <laughs> wasn't it? No, that picture there. It no. says $4,500 for this Bronco. Thanks, Obama. I don't know. I don't think so. Let's look it up. I thought here. it was. Car I allowance thought, rebates. I thought it was. That wasn't that, right? Was like I thought that was second. Bush. No, I thought that, that was, was his first term. Or was it Bush's last term? I don't remember. I think people give too much credit to the presidents when things happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> I won't argue with that at all. So he was a 44th president from January 20th, 2009 on. So this started in July 30th of 2009. So it was technically. But again, but I don't think that that was enough time for him to have passed that. It had no. to have already been in working its way through things before he became president. Yes, I would. Yeah, I would agree yeah, with that. say with our government, it's not going to happen. It's right. Like the Are first year of you being president <laughs> is really just getting you the, up to speed. Like trying to get the last guy's shit finished so you can move on with your life. Yeah. That's yes. why they got eight years now all the time. But 
We'll stay out of politics. We right. will stay yeah, out of politics. Need to go there. But uh, so, cash for clunkers. When I worked at a dealership, we had a couple cars come in on that. I remember people doing it, but I, I don't. So, I don't know anybody that did it. It must be less than twenty five years old on the trade in date. The only purchase. Let's see. Only the purchase of five year minimum lease of new vehicles qualify. You said? Vehicles must. Yeah, two thousand nine must. Vehicle must be less than twenty five years old on the trade in date. It's a weird less than 25 less than 25 years which old. Which in 2009 wrong. would have made them all computerized essentially. Near nearly. There was a few other stipulations as well. Must be drivable. New car bought must be under $45,000. Yeah, there's a there's a few other things here. They ran something through those engines that was like essentially like some sort of cement mixture. Oh, for the clunker cars, so they mm-hmm. could get back on the road. So they, so they could be oh, assured they, that it wouldn't. Oh, they just return. crush them. Well, they did, but they, they like put that as, at the dealer, it, it had to be ran. Through. Yeah, in, the motor oil was drained and replaced with sodium silicate. Ooh. Then started and run until the solution had become glass-like when heated. Ooh, that sounds really nasty. <laughs> That's not good. I kind of want to do that and then cut it in half. See what it like, like if I had the machine, I would absolutely do that. The outline procedure says that the running the engine at 2,000 RPM should disable the engine within a few minutes. All that's, right. That's they were serious weird. about making sure those cars didn't get back on the road. It's very wow. weird. And then they crushed them. Yeah, of course. So, but yeah, that's that seems. Uh, I think you gone. You've gone too far down the YouTube rabbit hole <laughs> on that one. Also, <laughs> I was I was pretty excited about that one. Uh, why old cars wear out? This guy claims that cars are engineered to last a certain amount of time, then break. Which duh. I think that that's <laughs> that's modern. That's just so how, is your, that's so is your laptop. That's how life works. Your phone. Right. So no, nothing's infinite. One of the interesting tidbits. Somebody commented on that specific one and went on to say that um, he had once read a story that Ford sent guys to junkyards in the twenties to see what was still good on Model <laughs> Ts and stuff like that, mm-hmm. because if the car made it far enough to get to the junkyard and there was a part that was still good on it, then they could make it less robust and therefore cheaper. No, you, you just, honestly, you, <laughs> you designed to a certain safety factor and a, and a life expectancy. And that's why you have a warranty to a hundred thousand miles. Right. Because they want you to buy a new one. Duh. Right. That's how, yeah, all of that's this how things works. Work. So, uh, this one is especially for Robbie because it has to do with Rolls Royce. And their jet engines. A little close to home for me. Right. <laughs> well, he can, so, he can tell us if it's true a, or not. Is this a chemtrail thing? I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> no, because this is automotive. So basically what this guy claims is that a chicken nearly bankrupt Rolls Royce and that the Corniche, is that how you pronounce yeah. that? Yep. Saved them. The, cars, so, the car saved them? The Corniche, the car they made. Hold on. So here's what he's claiming. In the late 60s, Rolls-Royce was busy making cars and jet engines. The jet engine department, flush with cash and engineering know-how, decided to try and make the most technologically advanced turboprop, the RB211. The game changer was resoundingly more efficient with better power-to-weight ratio, which, ac- which was accomplished by making the fan blades out of carbon fiber. What year was this? The 80s? The 60s. The 60s. The 60s. Jesus. So what he says here is that this glorious engine was going to change the world until the quality assurance team intentionally fired a chicken at the spinning turbine. The resulting crunching sound was a perfect metaphor for their stock price. This right about that time, too poetic for me to believe it. <laughs> oh no, shit! Right about that time, the Corniche was introduced, mostly to differentiate it from the Silver Shadow nameplate. The look and style of a driver's Rolls Royce fit the rock and roll lifestyle of the '60s, making it a hot commodity amongst the rich. Thus, this provided the much-needed cash flow as well as keeping the marquee on the road and in the papers. So, what he's saying is the RB211, and is that a motor? Do they make? Is, it, is that a thing? It's a jet engine. And we sell the shit out of those nozzles <laughs> still. That was built in the of 60s. You do. Yeah, we still it was sell developed those. Developed in the 60s. We still sell those engines or those nozzles today. Okay, well. So that, uh, no, that engine did not bankrupt that use, company. Do they use carbon fiber uh, fan blades not, in the turbo prop? Not that I'm aware of. But it I mean, but like the, the turkey test, that's real. Oh, yeah, I know that's a thing. Absolutely a thing. Because you have, like, we have bird, like, nozzles come in here to the, to the facility and they're labeled as bird strike. Which means they're full of feathers and other stuff. Isn't that what brought down that one plane that they landed on the Hudson River? 
uh, that guy in, they made in the a movie, movie after? In the movie it did. I don't know if it did. Pretty sure that's what brought that plane down was a bird through an engine. It happens. It happens all the time. I'm sure it does. I mean... It, it, it makes a mess. <laughs> If you if you want to know, <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's funny that they call it the RB211 specifically because no, that engine is still flying today, still kicking ass, and taking yeah, names. But we sell the shit out of those nozzles. Are they? Did they produce a whole bunch of carbon fiber turbine plane or engines? I don't know. Before? I, I I'm just going off of this conspiracy, man. I don't. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. If we put too many facts that. in it, then it might not be a conspiracy might, yeah. anymore. So we got to leave it at that. Yeah, that a big fat zero. Not buying that at all. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is, I guess, I wondered if uh, Rolls-Royce engines and Rolls-Royce cars were the same company back then. Well, that then. was what they, my they question were. was, was how much does that company cross? Like, if Rolls-Royce jet engines is doing poorly, but Rolls-Royce cars are doing well, does that matter for yeah, the I'm other not, half? Yeah, I'm not sure how connected they are, especially now. I'm not sure about then. Right. Yeah, so Rolls-Royce Limited... Founded in 1906, went into liquidation in 1971. It was the owner. Let's see, Rolls Which is, Royce. What is Rolls Royce Limited? Is that the I whole think that company? Was everything. Then Rolls Royce Motors, owner of the former car division, incorporated in 1973, was bought by Vickers, which was owned by Volkswagen. So I don't. I mean, I think they're two separate entities now, right? To my knowledge, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, but I think at that time they were the same company. But yeah, I don't. But I don't, it sounds I don't to buy me like story. it didn't save them because they went into liquidation. Well, that too, I guess. The, the story doesn't. Shortly add up after they, the time yeah. frame. That sounds like a whole bunch of nope. Lies. Because Rolls Royce PLC, which is the aerospace side, was incorporated in 1971. So that they liquidated the company, started two separate companies, and then the car vir- for car side got bought by Volkswagen in 1980. Again. Not necessarily based in fact. Right. Nope. So another interesting one that I think is probably not based in fact. In 1913, Rudolf Diesel, inventor of the diesel engine, went missing from the North Sea in the North Sea from the steamer, the SS Dresden, that had departed from Antwerp. Diesel had refused to license the exclusive use of the diesel to the German government and was in talks to supply the technology to the British for their submarines. Ten days later, he went missing from his unslept-in cabin. His body was found. There was evidence of his identity being retrieved and a and the badly decomposed body being thrown into the sea. Before Diesel went to Antwerp, he left his wife a bag with instructions not to open the bag until the following week. In the bag were Deutschmarks worth the current equivalent of 1.2 million U.S. dollars. My favorite part of this one is that clearly... It was because VW invented a time machine to go back in time <laughs> to kill him to hopefully prevent the spread of the diesel engine, thereby saving them billions of dollars from Dieselgate. Obviously. Yeah, but if VW did have a time machine, there would be no Dieselgate. <laughs> well, it did. So therefore, oh, you got to poke holes in this time lapse? Apparently, killing the guy who invented the diesel, mach- the diesel engine wasn't enough to kill the diesel engine. Yeah, but if you had a time machine, you'd come back to now and be like, oh, well, no, I didn't do it, so we got to go back and so do, kill him Clearly, they've never, they've never watched Terminator. Is really what or we're or Back to the here. Future or right. All, all well, that's literally what episodes. Terminator is all. about. Oh, let's go back in time and kill the guy that kills us in the future. That's literally what that movie is like about. Looper or Looper. I have never seen that oh, one. Oh, that's a good one. I like Looper. I've never seen Looper, but it does sound a little fishy. And the time machine part sounds fishy. <laughs> well, no, I mean the <laughs> him, him the dying parts under circumstances. I was gonna say the parts based in fact, like. The fact that he left his wife a large sum of cash and told her not to open it for a while, and that he died in mysterious circumstances, and that, I mean, in that time, that was when Germany was kind of rising to power, and if you were going to sell something to Brit to Britain, yeah, you're you're probably not going to end well. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So that part of it sounds reasonable, right? Is that it? Uh, I'm gonna go with yes. It doesn't the get rest of these here. aren't. Well, so this one's kind of interesting. We'll, we'll talk about this one. Uh, Bunky Knudsen okay. apparently was a CEO of GM at one point. Uh, he became the CEO of GM in the mid-60s, brought them into utter domination for all segments, then suddenly decides to quit and goes to Ford. Okay. The running theory is because he was behind all the bad decisions at Ford that nearly killed him at the time. 
such as the Mustang II, the Granada, the Fairmont. The belief is that GM actually paid him to go become the CEO of Ford and try and ruin the company so that they could be the dominant force. And then Ford would manage to oust him, put somebody else in his, Lee Iacocca in his place, and he brought him back again. It holds water. If you're stupid enough to <laughs> allow the man that made the Mustang 2 to continue making decisions, then... Well, but... So apparently he was running f- GM in the 60s. Yeah. GM was doing a lot of good things in that time frame. Yep. Yeah. You know, Camaros, Firebirds, etc. And then he goes to Ford and he makes the Mustang 2. It does seem a little fishy. Granada? Not a highlight in the Ford like lineup, uh, no. you know, so it does. Not a great. It time. does seem a little weird. I can see where, but I don't believe it. Not for a second. It's pretty it's, funny. It's, yeah, it's pure coincidence. But right. Yeah, some people are hot and then they go cold. Shit yeah, happens. Well, you know, much like this podcast. He was. <laughs> it's not getting better. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he was having a hard time adapting to the uh, mid seventies. Wasn't that what you just can't shove, era, you can't just shove V8s and stuff and make it bigger? Yeah, so it wasn't like a anymore. gas crisis. In yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, I, I don't. I think no it, car company was probably doing all that well in the seventies. So because no, if you look at Chevy in the seventies, it's not like no, it, and Dodge had a lot of problems as well. So yeah, just bad timing. On, but I like the conspiracy theory. It's more fun that way, it is right? Way, that you, that one's that one's kind of fun. We'll go with that one. Yeah, that that was my favorite. <clears throat> all right, let's move on to our topic this Please. week. Um. Don't forget to go to factorfabrication.com. Check out all the rad stuff that Booney and his crew put together. There he is standing with a table. A walnut at, dining table look top. Look at him being uh, quite the model there. Yeah, he's awfully... I uh, think Booney makes all that wood stuff. I, I believe so, yeah. You went to his shop. You saw his little woodworking. Yeah, not, he not was... little. He, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's giant. Huge. <laughs> he has this huge plating machine in there. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I do a little woodworking on the side. I'm like, uh, I don't think that that's true, Booney. He, he got it for a steal of a deal, though. He did. So, but, smart. Yeah. Anyway, check out he, some of the stuff that they can do. He told, me, he told me this week on Facebook that the band he was a part of was once requested to submit music to be used on the TV show Scrubs, which as far as I'm concerned is the greatest TV show now of he's all famous. time. So, to you? Yeah. You're fanboying slightly? Just, just being <laughs> requested is such an honor. I can't even... <laughs> it's oh. That post you made on Facebook eight years ago was super <laughs> fucking dramatic, by the way. I just want to point out. Was that about season nine? No, well, that was the end of season nine. Season nine doesn't count. Season nine, as far as I'm concerned, season nine doesn't exist. It's the worst episode. Series. I couldn't even I, finish it. Legitimately, I watch season one through eight of Scrubs annually. There's a, a large portion of all of those shows that I can rattle off as they go, line by line. I, it's, a little, I have, it's a little excessive. I have a problem. We all I need like hobbies, it. I guess. I <laughs> fucking love that show. It's so good. They do. They play it uh, Saturday mornings on Comedy Central. Yeah, I own them all on DVD. Still? So, yeah. I've yes, been so. doing that for 10 years. Yeah, forever. <laughs> it's, it's great. I love that show so much. It, it is a good show. GD, JD's my homeboy. <laughs> uh, that is unfortunate. Zach Braff's it, like... Is it, so, Zach, Zach Braff's new show is about... Like quitting his good paying, like great benefits corporate job to become a podcaster. His show is? His new show that he has on TV right now. Oh, really? Yeah. How's that working out for him? I don't know. I don't have cable. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I, was I would, I would absolutely watch it if I could, but I don't have cable. So I'm going to guess it's going poorly. Well, you know, yeah. podcasting is just, I mean, look at all the money we're bankrolling. Right, exactly. It's millions. So. Of, I mean, look at this table. Look at all this fancy yeah. equipment we have in here. It's pretty wonderful. I mean, if you guys could see the stage lighting setup that we have <laughs> on your side and on the YouTube channel, you would be well. You'd be we gotta, impressed. We got to keep our industry secrets, right? Yeah, secret. yeah, 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 we can't. We can't let everything go, right? So everybody else would be just as successful as us, then. And right, exactly. This is that's not what we're looking for here. No, it's a competition. Only, only we succeed, and everyone else fails. Right, exactly. Yeah, podcast yeah. war. Podcast yeah. war. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you want to buy right. some rad fabricated stuff for your house, um, check out his website. Factorfabrication.com, or if you just want to talk to a dude that was once selected to submit a song to Scrubs, <laughs> here's his contact information. If you go to the YouTube you channel, you could go to factorfabrication.com and contact him there. You should yep. probably contact him about his woodworking, though. That would be even more cool. That would be way better than uh, calling about random shit. Or his it welding, he's got lots of welders. Much, him and Max, much better use of his time. And it yours. probably would be. Don't That's call him okay. and ask him about Scrubs. I'll, 
I'll call you and be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> call me and ask me about Scrubs. Call Adam for and sure. ask about Scrubs. <laughs> we'll talk about Scrubs. All right. Adam. Again. Michael. Do you want to do your topic? <laughs> So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was walking out of my place of employment, and somebody who works there apparently drives an Isuzu Ombre, a Ombre, a Ombre, which is an S10 with an Isuzu front end on it, and it reminded me of badge engineering, which there's some good, some bad, and so I thought, well, let's do that. Let's talk about badge engineered cars. We've done you know kit cars, concept cars, stuff like that. Let's talk badge engineering: the goods, the bads, the uglies. Argue about which ones are better and which ones are worse. Who's right? Who's wrong? Can we? Uh, I would like to start with the engineer's point of view because I feel like he's going to be much this, less emo- emotional about this. I base this hundred percent off emotions. I think he's going to be very clinical about this. Well, I mean, nah, really? It's all emotions. Is it? Do you yeah. want? Do you want? To, where do you want to start? The you want to do? You want to do some of your favorites? Just, some of your least favorites? Sight. Before Robbie throws this, throws in there, I want to say. As far as I'm concerned, badge engineering and platform sharing, they're the same. And then, yeah, in this conversation? It's the same thing, because I don't know what the difference is, and I don't care. So it, don't don't be, like, jumping on us. Hey, that's not badge engineered. That's that's platform shared. It's the same it's thing. It's whatever. You're going to have to give up so, on that Wikipedia, Robbie. Yeah, it's not going to work. For some reason, it keeps kicking you out and trying to ask you to log, log in. in. What are you trying to look at? An Isuzu Ombre? Yeah. Well, there's a... It's, Wikipedia it's, has a page that's it's all like a, of the badge engineered cars oh, on the yeah, list, I know. and you can just click it and go to their page. Well, so let's just put this. it this way: the Ombre is a worse looking S10. That's all there is to it. They don't even have their own Ombre. page. It's just a, they just take you to the S10 page. Yeah. Well, there's not very many of them out there. See, it's a stupid thing. Fuck it. Anyway, Robbie, go ahead. Kick us off. Goods with or your, bads? Uh, Where are we starting with? You want me to start? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Goods or bads? What are we starting with? What do you uh, want to start with, Robbie? It's your day. Good. Okay. What do you have on your good list? The Toyota 86. That's badge engine? Oh, oh, the, the new the one. Subaru. The, the Subaru. The new one. The Subaru. Okay. Do you want to, do you want us to, I don't know what you did to Wikipedia, Robbie. I don't know, man. Mad. Go to Google Images. <laughs> Jesus. What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I didn't know you could. It works you just had to fine. log in. To I'm in the article that you're trying to get to on my <laughs> computer, and it's working just fine. I don't know what you did to Wikipedia. Man, it's mad. At did me. you run out of login or out of article views like Michael did with oh, Bloomberg? No, no. <laughs> so anyway, tell us about the '86, Robbie. Why did you choose this? Let's see, for for me, this is still like Toyota's response to everyone asking for a new Supra, because this is a better looking car to me than the new Supra. So when they came out with this, I'm like. This is great. It's a rear wheel drive, two plus two. I mean, it's got a little engine in it, but you could pull that out and do something great with it. <laughs> but I mean, it's it is to me what like the Super was in the '90s. What uh, the, you know, the S chassis is. You know, it, I think this will be a car that people are really going to go after here in a few years, and you know, build race cars, drift cars. Like, I mean, it's, I think it's going to have a huge market. And it already fact, does. Yeah, even I think it's gonna be even bigger though. Like once the once the resale value drops to the point where like it's probably gonna be cheaper than an S chassis in all reality. But when the, you know when Toyota and Subaru got together and designed this, Subaru made it, and then Toyota badged a few of them and and hardly sold any here. Like it's really hard to find a it was a Scion FRS, then got rebadged as a Toyota GT86 here. Yes, that sounds that's correct. What they yep. call it. And then it was a yeah. Yeah, GT or yeah, GT eighty six everywhere else as well. But yeah, for to me, that this is my like one of my favorite um, badge engineered cars. You do want one of these? I, you've I you've expressed interest I, in one of these. I really a like handful them. of times. There's some I don't know what it is about the front bumper. There's something I'd change. Like it's just, it just doesn't match the rest of the car. They make own. lots of body kits, Robbie. They do, but yeah, but, but to me, this is this is like when I'm say I want another S chassis. Just give me something like this, a two plus two, simple, simple sports car, something that we could build off of right so and i thought toyota and subaru knocked out of the park with this one so i like to bitch about the price on this car it's so too, i was interested while you were talking I it's too up. damn high it's too damn high <laughs> uh that may be true i just looked up uh 1990 uh what an s chassis cost and the cost was approximately thirteen thousand dollars thirteen thousand five hundred dollars 1990 1990 what 95 i'm not gonna look that up right what's now. that adjusted uh, it's twenty five thousand seven hundred dollars, which is about the price of these. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, 
can't argue too is much. Is it too expensive? Eh, I don't know. I think it's still too I don't want to pay 32 grand for like the BRZ with leather. With leather. That's yeah. the problem. I don't want to pay that much for it. 25 grand. I don't yeah. know. It, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Still still have mixed feelings about it. It's not enough value for me to want to buy it. I'll put it that way. I understand. Not a new one. No, no, that's just it. Like I want one stripped out like in a year or two. But if I was going to have one, I would wanted to say Subaru, but I don't know if, uh, see, I'm the opposite. if I could Oof. do it. I'm the opposite. I want to say Toyota. You want to, you want the new Shocking. one that's a Toyota. Yeah. I'll even take the Scion. I could be down I could be down with that. Do you say if you bought a Scion that you would take the badges that you No, would... I'd leave the Scion badges. That's fine. He's a Scion fan. I don't well, mind. Scion's gone now. Yeah, so the that's new one's fine. a Toyota. So you would buy a Scion and just rock the Scion. Yeah, that's all good. You'd be down with that. I, I would take the Subaru badges off and put Sign badges, badges on it. <laughs> That'd really piss somebody off, wouldn't it? I think so. All right, I'll do that. But that's kind of like at home badge engineering. But, but it's not wrong. It's the same car built in the same factory. Yeah, but it's got different bumpers and stuff on it. This is where you start upsetting people. So, yeah. It's a, it's a little different. You can different. change a bumper. I know. The, the little badge across or at the very top back corner of the front fenders yep. on the Scion, it had a picture of two opposing cylinders. You know, oh yeah, yeah, boxer things. Yep. And on the Subaru, it didn't. I always thought that was weird because you'd think the Subaru would have that, right? You Adver- know? advertising it, right? I don't know. I, don't, I always like this car. That's I, fair. I want it. I'll give you that one. You I want, was you excited want. when they came out. I think, I think they're great cars. I'm just for some reason I'm not that excited about owning one. You know what my problem is with it? I would literally have to take the engine out, and I'm just not big into that. Like. That commitment at that price level. Oh yeah, because no, cause not you, at, not at that oh, price level. Okay, like a used. I was gonna now? say because sure. you you hate swapping things. That's just not. Your I don't. Remote. I don't even know if I'd want to like spend ten grand on a used one and pull the engine out. And I don't even know if you could find one for ten grand. What if you co-part you buy, one? Yeah, co-part one. You get one that's like. Yeah, but I'd rather have a Genesis, which would be cheaper. Oh, that's and I right. could get away with like an old Genesis. Yeah, I could get yeah, away with the three point eight for a while, and then swap that later. Or even the turbo. Or the yeah, just turn up the boost. Yeah. Have some fun. Might even be better to have the turbo if you're not planning on swapping it. Yes. Possibly. Long term. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know. I don't quite get down with that. We'll see if they get real cheap, which I don't think they will. No, probably not. I think as soon as they start to get kind of cheap, the, dr- the drift, 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 drift tax will kick in and all the road racers and stuff will want to buy them. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, the SCCA is a class specifically for this car in solo. It's the only car that has a class for it in solo. Dang it. I mean, but. They're not, they're not gonna be cheap. No, no. But who knows? Maybe if I find myself being slightly more affluent at some point in my life, that'd be fun. I yeah. could get down on a. Says the luxury Genesis owner. I know. It's all. It's all. It's did, about, I tell, did I tell you? That, uh, oh, uh, oh, I'm no. excited. <laughs> so you bought your Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. And then I go up to work the other day, and I'm like, man, that's a nice Genesis. The president of the company <laughs> just bought a Genesis. Like just like yours. Yours is white, his is gray. It's identical. They're identical. They're otherwise. identical in every way. It's a it's a lifestyle choice, Rebby. Yeah, it's, just, it's a different lifestyle. Just one of the highest ranking guys in our business, and he's just like, Yeah. In aerospace. Let's what's I'm well, gonna have the well, same vehicle as Mr. Beck here. To be fair, to be fair, he may have read Consumer Reports, and Consumer Reports says that the Genesis is the most um I don't know. I don't know what it was. Well liked, well respected, highest quality brand currently available for sale. Um, Should have got a stinger. Take that with. I wonder what that costs Hyundai to get that. I don't know. Well, I was going to say take that with a grain of salt because number two was Audi. So (laughs) this was based on customer feedback. Nothing like good old fashioned brainwashing. Or paying people off. Hey, you want to take? You want fifty bucks to take a survey? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Genesis is my favorite car. So yes. anyway, Robbie, what else do you have on your uh, favorites for badge favorites? engineering? Favorites? Yeah. We're talking goods. The, the Mitsubishi GTO. Do you think this is better than the the Dodge Stealth? When I was in high school and younger, like uh, middle school age, I for some reason loved the Stealth. You really liked the loved Stealth? Loved it. Really? There, there was a guy in town that had a green one. <sighs> and I, 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 could, I, I swear to God. I couldn't tell you like what the... Uh, the trim level was or right. anything like that, but for some reason, that car. It's like, man, I want a stealth. Like, what about 3000 GT? No, I want a stealth. Really? <laughs> That's surprising. Then, as I've gotten old, it's like, no, I want a 3000 GT. <laughs> 
So this car was really, really advanced for its day. Super advanced. Active aero, if you will. Electronic suspension. Electronic suspension, all-wheel steering, twin turbo V6. It was quite a car. Yeah, and then as they got a little bit older, like they got better looking. I thought yes. I mean they, 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 they kind of certainly did dial them back like on the performance side of it. Yep. But man, and they got rid of the pop up headlights, so that's nice. It's always a good thing. I don't like the pop up headlights. Michael's furiously googling over there. I'm just looking at the the GTO because that you know I don't know. I always thought GT. the Dodge Stealth was the and the 3000 GT one? were both ugly. Oh really? I, There's I, something I, ugly duck about them. I just do not like. I won't disagree with that. Even without the pop-ups, those headlights are not a good situation. They're not. It's kind of it's kind of got that ugly Camaro front end, like the the bass it's fish looking thing. Body. Yeah. It's kind of catfishy. Yeah. Fourth gen. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I always thought these were cool. I mean, they're thirty eight hundred pounds though, which is a shit ton of weight. And if you've ever looked under the hood of that engine or under the hood, that engine's just like stuffed in there. I've heard some really serious horror stories about working on those motors. I can't imagine working on Like, that alone was enough to talk me out of it. Just yeah, because I think that's a wise decision. They looked awful to work on. And I, I've seen a lot of, like, where the active aero stuff doesn't work anymore, and a lot of people delete the all-wheel steering. And- yeah, I would, I would imagine that was great when it first came out, but as things started to wear out, as things broke down, I bet it was just a nightmare to maintain. Jesus, like, Robbie, that picture of that <laughs> engine bay is yeah, there's, there's frightening. You, I would, it's transverse in there, twin turbo V6. And there's so many wires. Yeah, it, yeah that that twin turbo setup's got to just be awful. Were these 90s cars? Yeah. Right? Yep, 90s but, cars? Okay. Yep. I remember going to Excessive when Josh was working there, and there was a couple of them in the shop, and I look at them, and I look at that, and I was like, that's got to fucking suck, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Anything else on your positive list? This one, I think I'm going to say it's positive, but the mass majority is going to hate it. Oh, I'm so excited. I swear to God, if you bring up an avalanche. It's, that's, well, is that, that's technically, ba- it, is the badge, badge, it is a badge engineered Technically, car. the badge engineered car of the avalanche would be the EXT. Yes, that's fair. Uh, the avalanche yeah. is just the vehicle. The badge engineered one is the EXT. Is the EXT. The Escalade EXT. No, but, but uh, my other car that I think you guys will hate is the Cadillac XLR. Oh, you hate it? I No, I kind of like it. I oh, have you do that, like it. I have that on my bad list. I, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> the Cadillac XLR was made from leftover pieces of the C5. The left, I think so it was built on the C6 chassis with leftover pieces from the C5, and then they put a North Star in it. Yeah. They made them in Bowling Green. Yeah, at the Corvette facility. At the, yeah. And they were ungodly expensive. Ungodly expensive. XLR V, which would be supercharged, yep. fast, 4.6 seconds, 0 to 60, cost, in 2006, cost 100000 Jeez! Or no, I'm sorry, $110,000. Oh. That's U.S. dollars, not pesos. <laughs> That's not inflation Or Australian adjusted. dollars. Not That's that just what it cost. What was, oh, what was the equivalent Corvette cost? Like Half that? Half of that, yeah. Yeah, probably sixty. Which oh. the I wonder, see, I wonder why these didn't one. sell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I think the supercharged one only made 443 horsepower. So in 2006, you could have had, I think it would have been an LS2. So you would have six. Yeah. Would well, you even need to get a Z06 to beat that car? You could even beat. like I, a base I be, model. I bet you could beat it with an LS2 Corvette, <laughs> to be completely honest. But uh, you know what? There's something about this car I really want to like, but it's kind of terrible. On Sons of Anarchy, the. Like the HBIC, she's driving a blacked out one of these. Yeah. And for some reason, I always thought like, man, that'd be the hot. Is that really what they refer to her as? That's what I refer to her as. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Just bitch, check. Head bitch in charge. But uh, for some reason, I always thought like, that, you know, that's a, that's a hot wife car. Trophy wife car? It is a trophy wife Absolutely. car. There's no that's, doubt. That's, that's, that's how I look at it. And Power that's kinda, top and all. I kind of like it. I shouldn't. Are you telling me you're going to get one for Jess? What's the resale value on this? Now? <laughs> uh, I think it's probably pretty poor. I think you can get one cheaply if you would like, sir. I think that'd be faster than the 240, though. Yeah. It's, no. It's 3,800 pounds. Yeah. So oh, it's is not it? Any, oh, it's not any whoop. lighter than your... Uh, it's like 1,000 pounds It's 1,000 pounds heavier, so we're okay. No, nah, we could get her that. That'd be cool. Then you got to maintain it, though. That's the problem. <laughs> it's a North yeah, Star. North Star. I've taken one apart North and put Star it back life together. North Star a bad life, man. Mm-mm. That's a rough engine to work on. Yeah, yeah, so it's really unfortunate. I that do want to so like it. I do so much it. moving parts. Do you think that's a better looking Corvette? No, 
I think I'd be down with one if it if it was LS swapped. Like, I wonder how hard that is. If somebody's made a kit. They'll make a sweet drift car. It would make a sweet <laughs> drift car since everybody's building Corvettes. Rad. An XLR would be sick. So is that fiberglass then? Like, I, like well, a 3, vet, 100, I wonder? 3,800 pounds, it almost can't be. Right? I don't know. You can make pretty heavy fiberglass cars. Take look yeah, at the well, C4. That, yeah, that hard top convertible is going to be a lot of power heavy. folding top convertible. That's, that's a lot of heavy electron or yeah. Uh, mechanics. I yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to look that up. So yeah, I won't do that. It's not worth it. But they don't look bad. I think they actually look better with the top down. I no, absolutely not. No, no absolutely not. I, I I don't know. I still kind of like it. I want to like it, but the fact that it's leftover Corvette parts. With a North Star in it, just See, makes like me right feel there. really bad about I mean, it. And that rims, the rims are a little over the top, but uh, yeah, blacked out one. They're they're good looking. I like it. I like the idea of a drift car. It's a strong idea. <laughs> I'm digging that. <laughs> There's for sure a bunch of those out there with blown up North Stars in it, right? Oh, I bet. And not only that, but now you can get Corvette knuckles, modified knuckles for oh, Corvettes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> for C, but it's got to be C5. So I think that's mostly no C5, C5 or C6. I think that's mostly C5 suspension parts. They make both. Okay. And they may even be the same. Okay. Which sounds like a very GM thing to do. Yeah. Redesign a car but use the same parts. Right. right. If it sells. Well, I mean, it didn't, but if it did. <laughs> well, the XLR didn't. That's because they had a three digit or a six digit price tag on it. Price is too damn high. Price was very high. There Out are several control. LS T56 swapped XLRs on the interwebs. <laughs> if that is your thing. So the people have, people have done it. Are they reasonably priced? Or are these not for sale? Uh, these would be ones like people putting them on the dyno and stuff like oh, that. So okay. I, don't, I don't know okay. what it would actually take to do it. Gotcha. Who knows? Maybe you can just throw some Corvette motor mounts in there. And I bet call it, it might be that it, easy. It can't be that hard. It might be that it easy. Be. It might put be a, put a Corvette pedal box in there because I think they were all automatics. Yeah. Put you a Corvette put pedal box yep. in there and a Corvette motor and trans in there. and You could do it in a weekend. Move you could right do it along. in a weekend. I'm, I'm Luke could it. do it in I, yeah. like an afternoon. You, you 38 abs- hours. You absolutely could LS swap that in a, in a weekend. I'm calling it right now. Wow. So, anyway, I'm not totally kicking that idea out of bed, Robbie. Yeah. I don't hate that car entirely. It is terrible, but I don't absolutely hate it. It's terrible in stock form, but it can be fixed. I don't hate it in stock form. Robbie wants kinda, one. Kinda like Robbie it. wants one in the family. Yeah, there you go. Is that it's it keeping for, with that GM life. It's good. Are you uh, are you good? Is your That's, those are my three good ones? Those are your three good ones. Um, let me run through my good ones real quick, and then we'll come back and do the bad ones. Um, ones I have probably ones nobody's surprised by. Uh, the 2004 to 2006 GTO. Okay. For obvious reasons, it's that hard is, to argue with that. That's a Holden Monaro for those playing along at home. Yep, that is it's an hard Australian car. Um, in that same vein, because we're here, the G8 and the SS. Right, the Commodore. Both Holden Commodores. Um, I do particularly like the Vauxhall VXR8 that was available What's in that? the UK. What's that? Uh, similar car. Maybe Is that a Commodore it. still? Uh, Vox, yes, it's a Commodore. So Vauxhall okay. VXR8. Rabbi. Is that the one that uh, that Richard Hammond drove in a Top Gear episode and it has the world's loudest supercharger on it? Yes. I love that car. So I'm down for that. You should hear the sound clip of that thing. Have I not? Like, don't play it on the podcast because no, no, it's top check it out. stuff. But absolutely, I'll post a video. Look at of that. It. It's, it's, How could you not want? I'll that? post a video of it. it. Looks huge. It is massive. It's a, well, it's, it's, it's an a GA. SS or a G8. It looks bigger though, like quite a bit bigger. Nah, I don't hate it. Can't get much bigger. I'd rather Those have a G8. Big cars. Though. Oh yeah, G8s are not small. I'd rather have a G8. Uh, well. I would probably rather have a G8 because I don't want to be in that Holden club. That you don't want to be here. that guy that just like bought really expensive bumpers and put them on his G8? I'm not down for that. So no, 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 in no. that case, I would probably would rather. I get that. And I don't want to have to like Import one. be one of those guys in the Holden like, who's well, got a real one? Like I don't want to be that guy either. You so. can explain it to everybody. I don't I don't want any part of that. So I'll just have one of the ones that you could get here and buy it from a car dealership. Right. Um, so anyway, those are some of my favorites. Um, next one coming up. I don't know why I like this car, but I do. Speaking of building drift cars, the SC three hundred or four hundred. What are Lexus? those? It's Lexuses. They're like they look like forties. Oh. Well, yeah, no, I know that, but what are those built off of? Supra. Yep. Oh, really? Mark four. Are Supra. they that similar? Yes. Really? Yes. I didn't realize that. So the SC three hundred. Um, it's a night. Ooh, look at that picture, Robbie. That is yes, yes, sir. It's a lowered one. With That's the a lowered one. So the Lexus SC. There was the the early ones. The three hundred or the four hundred was technically a Toyota. Soarer, I think is yes. how you say that. S O A R E R. Yep. Um, so that's what they were. I think they were actually badged that in 
Japan. Yeah. And then when they came here, they they changed them up and put leather in them and called them the uh, SC 300 or 400. Um, you get a 2J or a 1UZ V8. V8 life. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, there were some that were available with a manual. Really? Yep. They're yeah. few and far between, but oh, so I've never there. actually seen one. There, there are some manual with the 2J. This would be a 2J manual. I would hope so. Um, but obviously non-turbo. So there weren't any. Is it the 2J GTE? Yeah, 2JZ something GTE. Like that. That's the you don't you don't get the turbocharged one. Um, I, I mean, when it was new versus a Supra, I don't know that I would have picked I it over it. Think I would have taken that over the Supra. You think so? I think so. I would not. But I'm I'm really not a big fan of like I'm not a diehard Supra guy either though. Oh, I'm, we know. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with Robbie. I'm not a huge like Mark Four. Super but guy. I would take a super over this, though. Well, if it's your money, Robbie, you either have to give somebody fifty thousand dollars, oh, or you're... you can have this for six thousand dollars in good shape. Oh, we're talking today. Yeah, I'm talking today. Oh, then absolutely this. Yeah, that's not. I was even talking like if they were both five thousand dollars, or you were just going to give me one, yeah, both see, equivalently optioned, equivalently conditioned. You just you drive one home and it's yours. I would take that for sure. I would take the SC. No. Absolutely not. Over the Supra. I don't know if I could make that call. <laughs> but if it was my money, I would pick the Lexus. Yeah. Because oh, I think it's uh, the Supra pricing is silly. I know we've talked well, about Supra it a lot. Supra would but... bankrupt me at this point, And <laughs> I, I, to be, <laughs> many, many people. To be honest, a stock Mark IV Supra, I don't really think is a very good looking car. There's something weird looking about it. But people do cool stuff with them when they, you know, change yeah, they, they off, they you know, higher offset They put turbo 400s in them and they, and they take them drag racing. That's that's one thing you can Big do. Big singles, them. yep. So, yeah, that's probably my one of my favorite ones. I wanted to run through a few other things too. So, GM, I would say, is one of the worst offenders. They of need badge to calm the fuck down. Um, <laughs> I will. Well, get I was to, doing some research on this. There's yeah. a seriously huge number of cars. I. When we get to the least favorite ones, I'll talk about those because those are mostly GM related. But I wanted to make a point that GM has been doing this for a long, long, long time. Right. Um, and cars that people probably like from previous GM eras, especially the muscle car era, they were very much doing that at that time as well. So in 19, let's say 1969, 1970, um, people probably, some people are probably familiar with the A body platform. So the A body platform would have been. The Chevelle would probably be the most common yep. car known from the yep. A-Body platform. But A-Body's also included the GTO, the Buick Sport Wagon, the Vista Cruiser, the Buick GS, the Buick Special. I don't know what that is. The El Camino. I think the GS and the Special are just different trim packages of the same car. They may be. The El Camino, the 442, the Cutlass, and the Tempest. Yes. Those are all the Tempest, basically the same car. The Tempest and the GTO, again, that's an option pack. The GTO is an option package trim level for the... Well, it depends on where you want to draw that line because the Tempest had a different nose and it had like different fenders and different grill, different yeah, headlights and all that stuff. It's a trim package. But where do you draw the line though? Between badge, know, badge engineering and chassis Well, but shit. in the same car, or in the same brand because the, the Tempest and the GTO are both Pontiacs. Yeah. Built on the same chassis. The GTO was a spec'd up version of the Tempest. Ergo, option package. But it's a different model. In GM's catalog, it's a different model. I don't know that it was. I think this is a good okay. example why GM is the worst <laughs> offender of this. Right. Because so they just rename super, shit. It gets super confusing. They just rename cars, basically. Yeah. But it's all the same car. Yeah. Like If you put a 442 next to a Chevelle... I mean, then you can see the difference between the two, but when you look at the car from the side, they look almost exactly the same. They are, because they are they are the same car. Right. So, like anyway. That, my dad has that 72 GMC Sprint, which is yeah. an El Camino. Literally, the only piece on that car that is not, that you can't just go to whoever and buy as an El Camino are the badges. All of the sheet metal is identical to an El Camino. <laughs> it just says GMC on it instead. So I would say well, one of yes, my other so. favorites is a 70s A-body, or a 1970 A-body, because it's so many cars. I love the Chevelle, the GTO, the GS, the 442, all that stuff's good stuff. But it's all the same car. It's all the same. The, the only difference would be 
and maybe GM could catch a little bit of a break for this, is that the different manufacturers, in air quotes, Buick, Oldsmobile, Chevy, had different engines. At that time, especially. Right. Yeah. Which was cool. So you had a Pontiac engine, you had an Oldsmobile engine, you had a you had a Chevy engine, and they were different. So credit for that, I guess, but like, it was still... Drastically like, different, yeah, too. Yeah, yep. Layouts, distributor locations. That 442 motor is got... Uh, like a really low angle V. So it's wider. It's really wide, but it made a ton of torque that way. Crazy motor. But then, you know, Pontiac made a 455 big block. Mm-hmm. GM made a four, or Chevy made a 454. Not at all the same motor. So, so they were spending all their motor on, all their money on motors and right. not changing the car. Which is fine. It's the way it should be. What do you have on your good list, Adam? <clears throat> all right. Well, I got a couple. Of course, I would, I, I have to include. The Toyota Cavalier. Yep. The That's JDM JDM Cavalier. The JDM Cavalier. I totally forgot about. You got to. I got to include that, right? It's it's a requirement. It's your. Uh, it's your. Uh, if I was going to own a JDM car, it would for sure be a Cavalier. I bet you could get one of those. Nah, they're not twenty five years old yet. But I can just import the like four things that are different about them, and boom, we're done. The, radi- the radiator support. The no, like they have like different tail lights and little yeah. shit like that. It's not a big deal. Is that so an actual Toyota right there, Robbie? I, I think in so. That picture. Yeah. You zoom in on it, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Is it really? Look the tail lights are different. But well, and they so they had a sedan can't see and a coupe. Though. I don't know that I've ever seen a sedan. I'm sure they exist. Yeah, it's right. Oh, it's right there. That's yeah, sure the they exist. There. I've just never seen one. We I'm, saw the coupe at the at Grid Life two yep. years ago. I just love the. Uh, I love the coupe. I need, me another, should have, I need another need Cavalier Toyota, You need a Toyota Cavalier so, to confuse so people. So when I was buying cars, or when I was trying to buy a car, and I ultimately ended up buying a minivan, I was looking for Cavaliers, and there's this funny thing about Cavaliers. There's lots of them at very low prices, and literally all of them have K-members that are rusting away from the frames, and people are just like, oh, it just needs a new K-member. Well, yeah, that's easy. Except, <laughs> chances are, if the K-member is so rusty that it's falling out of the frame, the frame is probably shot too, which means that car is... Junk, Worthless. total it, crush it. So I like, I like, would need to go to Phoenix, Arizona, and buy a Cavalier, which just seems stupid to me. It seems like a lot of work. Like I'm going to spend road trip. I'm going to spend eight hundred dollars on plane tickets to go buy a five hundred dollar Cavalier. Yeah, we'll, we'll drive with you, man. It just seems trip. really dumb. So uh, one that might trigger Michael a little bit. I think it's a better looking version of its original, the Saab nine seven X Arrow doesn't trigger me at all which is a trailblazer ss that i think is better looking how do i not know about this thing so saab made the 97x made which like is a trailblazer yeah there's not very many <laughs> arrows out there any of them. there is one here in des moines i've really? seen it once or twice so i i like them i think they're really cool looking they're so weird looking i like the front end a little better really i do it's just like something it. about it i like it less yeah actually now i look at it again i'm not I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, well, I kind of figured that would be the case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually just glad that all of that is out of my life. Now I think about it more. I don't want any part of that. I saw this shot of the interior, and it is disgusting. It is terrible. It's Boy, that it's worse, quickly, worse than it? the Chevy? Uh, yeah, because it's got that fake red wood shit that you have in your oh, avalanche. I hate, I hate that stuff. But I it looks like the, the Arrow kinda... had that, or oh, if that yeah. was just the 97X. Or if they were all the same interior wise. Yeah, it's identical to what the Avalanche has. Yeah, look but at that I, nasty yeah, that's nonsense. Pretty nasty. <laughs> Covered that with vinyl. <laughs> it's all black. That was now. a weird period for GM. Yeah. And interiors. Well, yeah. The interior they, design they, was they not still, their deal. They still make that uh I don't know, color, is that what you want to call it? That interior piece? Yeah. It's that awful. plastic. Yeah. yeah. That looks like wood. It's not wood. Let's be real here. No, it's awful. So the other one that I wanna well I've Two that I kind of want to, one that is a badge engineer, one's kind of stretching. But uh, the Dodge Raider, which is a vehicle we actually talked about many moons ago. Dodge Michael, Raider's sick. Michael picked it as a uh, as a Craigslist Challenge vehicle. It's apparently a Mitsubishi Pajero, Pajero however you're going to pronounce that. I don't know. Okay. So I didn't realize that at the time. I do now. When you know that and you see it, it's pretty obvious, right. but I didn't realize it at the time. Those things are sweet. I would really rock one of those. I agree. I, do you remember that, Rob? I legit. I, do remember the I legit enjoyed the Raider when I was looking at it. On, yeah, on Craigslist, that, especially for the money. It had that like weird inclometer, yeah, or whatever. Yep, yep. Yeah, it was just cool. It's it, funky. It cool. It's neat. I don't, you know, 
that's something I would rock. And then one that's kind of stretching the definition a little bit, the Isuzu Impulse Turbo. I don't know that car at all. So uh, Isuzu at the time was owned by GM. Yep. And Lotus was also owned by GM. So uh, the oh, suspension yes. on this car is tuned by Lotus. Handling by Lotus, right. even in the advertisement. Right. So it's a little like, a, so it was designed by some Italian guy whose name I can't pronounce that also designed things like Ferraris and some Alphas. And it's quite obvious when you look at it, it's very wedgy. It was that guy. Yep. Uh, I think they're like 80s tastic and i love everything about it it's rad robbie it is painfully 80s it's very it's painfully it's very 80s. delorean in the front it's oh i think it looks like a volkswagen shiraka shiraka first gen shiraka but i it may even be slightly better looking and it has a suspension to my lotus handling my lotus so it's kind of stretching the definition because I mean, it's it is just an Isuzu. They were the only ones that sold it, but it had right. you know things that were done in it, like the suspension. And I don't remember who made the motor, but it was some weird little thing. Hmm. So. It was called an Asuna in Canada. Yes. So uh, apparently, Asuna, Asuna Sunfire was a brand in Canada that was just a GM brand, similar to like Mercur. I think there were a lot of Mercurs, Mercurs there. Mm-hmm. We only got one or two of here, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Canada for a while had their own brands, I guess. I love how Wikipedia seems to think that the Pontiac Sunfire was the successor to this car. <laughs> I would <laughs> stretching the would, definition of successor. It, they okay. built wow. it afterwards, and it had the same number of doors. Yes, this and is it, true. And it, it shared yep. a name. It, sh- it shared a name. In yeah, it Canada. does. It does actually say Pontiac Sunfire, and then parentheses for Asuna Sunfire, comma Canada. Right. Well, it so. is that that Pontiac Sunfire that that. That's a, that's a bad car. I liked the How dare first you, gen's How front dare end you. better than the How first gen's Cavalier. No. Cav- How dare end. you? How dare you? There's no good to come from the Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> I like the first gen front end better than Our, the first gen. Adam, no, why? of that rounded it Cavalier. Like, it looks like a. I shouldn't say first gen. Sorry. I think they were technically second gen, but pre like the first facelift. That's the second edition of the second gen. You that's like, you like that's the not the one I he like. He doesn't like that one. Though. The one that had more square headlights. Like try like a ninety nine Sunfire. Yes, I like that front end. I, when I was <laughs> the Cavalier. When I was looking for the cars and I was looking for the two forty, yeah, I came yeah. across a wrecked Corvette. And I was like trying to do the math to figure out how I could afford it. Corvette? Yeah, black Corvette. And I was okay. Like, I was like, it was like a 98. And I was like, I You're not quite there. I was Rex like, Corvettes are real like. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was 18. Give me right. a break. So I'm looking at it. And I remember my uncle like knew I was looking for cars. And he called me. And he's like, yeah, I think I found a car for you. <laughs> it was a black Sunfire. I was like, no, you're we're, we're not on the same page here. Sunfire, Corvette. I mean, they're basically you, the same. I'm thing. over here, LS life already. And, <laughs> and you're all like Sunfire. No. We'll meet. Not the same. Nope. You Sorry. could have met in the middle with a cor- uh, with a Cavalier with a two forty. It's not really meeting in the middle. You should have got an S thirteen. That nah. would have been meeting in the middle. There's so yeah, there's there so go. many things I could have done differently. I like that gen of Cavalier. That right is there. unfortunate. Or, this, sorry, this, Sunfire. This, whatever, dude. I, <laughs> <laughs> so the front ends, that front end, like hood, fenders, bumper, all that stuff, will bolt right on to the same year Cavalier. No. Well, yes, bolt right on. And I liked the back end of the Cavalier better, and I always wanted to get that front end for my Cavalier. Was this before or after the Cadillac part? <laughs> would you have done this and him the Cadillac? Sure, interior? why not? I would have done it all, Robbie. I found the car that I don't like the most now. <laughs> it's this one? You want to change your list? <laughs> It's funny you should say that this because I would like to go through my this least is favorite. Technically list. bad Hon- engineered, I guess. Yeah, honestly, the I didn't have like a list of like worst. I just couldn't believe how many freaking Daewoo's there are. It's a lot of Daewoo's. Like Daewoo makes like thirteen, like a car, and then there's thirteen variants of it that other car, other brands sell. It's just weird to yeah. me. Yeah. Honestly, the XLR was like my. I hate it, but I love it. Not can I that. can I do my bad list then? Because I have a very it short gonna, bad it list. It may trigger so. Adam. Oh, um, fuck. Just yes. in general, just in well, I just want to say any GM product from like 1997 to I'll say up to 2008. Sorry, Robbie. Excluding trucks, how about this? What about GM's car catalog from 1997 to 2008 was complete and utter. You can't just say 2007. Fucking garbage. 
I said you car. Can't, you can't leave me out I of this. I said car. To 2007. <laughs> Own it, Robbie. I had one and it sucked. I like mine a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what What? don't you like? Just look up 1997 Malibu. Hot oh, it's so garbage. Bad. It's fucking hot garbage. You know what everybody needs in their lives? A Malibu Max. The P90 platform... So it was built from 1997 to 2005. It's includes the every, following cars. Everybody had this. Oldsmobile Alero, Oldsmobile Cutlass. Don't know why those are why they made those at the same time. Pontiac Grand Am, which was the pinnacle of hot garbage from GM. <laughs> the Pontiac Grand Am should never have been made. I like the Pontiac. Grand why do you like the Grand Am? You could get those. You don't like the, the Sunfire, but I you like the Grand the, Am. The, the 90, early ones in with a stick. You could, you could get a coupe with uh, with a stick. The early ones aren't bad. Why would no? I liked the Why early would ones. you want one of those? That I like the, the worst, early Grand Prix. That is the worst of, of that GM. That is stuff. the worst of GM. I think this. I, Why are you such a hater? Yeah, man. The Grand Ams are <laughs> great starter cars. <laughs> I disagree. I, the people that had them in my high school always had serious mechanical failures with them. Yeah, after like. But was that the car's fault, or miles. was that the high schoolers' fault? Let's just say. Grand Am's had more problems than other cars. No, absolutely. You like that? That's on the screen right now. That what is that? 1995. It's a 95 Grand Am. You GT. like that? If <laughs> somebody five- said to you, Robbie, would you like to drive this car? You would walk up to them and say, Yes, I would like to drive. If I get this it with a five speed pile yes, of please. dog shit. <laughs> it, yes. If so- the problem with the Grand Am is it never had fucking mufflers on it because they all rusted they were, out. That's not important. <laughs> it is important. That's a, I'll they, take mine with a quad was, four, please. When I was the, the, uh, 14 years. Old, I remember Grand Ams that didn't have mufflers anymore. <laughs> that was 14 it fucking was like years ago, Robbie. <laughs> that was a 2004. It was less than 10 years old, and it didn't have a muffler then. <laughs> like, you think that's a good fucking car for a high schooler? Yeah. No, for nobody. For nobody. <laughs> Did they have a 3800 in 95? When was it? No, I don't matter. think the Grand Am came with a 38. You got with a 32 or the Quad Four. I'm pretty sure. I don't think the, the 38 new, the, came. The newer ones had the 38s. Like I the, think the Grand, the Grand Prix's. Prix's, which those were, those are a totally different body. It's also right. style. You're garbage. Right. You're no, wrong. You're no wrong. way. You're wrong, dude. With the exception of the G. The GTP. GTP. The Grand Prix were great. We can, we can keep the GT out, GTP out of this. The GTP, GTP can great. be on its Grand own Grand Prix were great. Are you kidding me? I like crazy GM. GM when they put too big a motor and too small a car. I won't disagree That's great with any GM. of that. The Cavalier SS, I'm good with that. That's fine. We can it keep that. It wasn't a Cavalier SS. You had it. <laughs> I put <laughs> stickers no, 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 no. on Sorry, mine. The, col- the Cobalt SS. SS. Oh, that's, that's I okay. really, really want a Cobalt. That's to- I'm totally good with that's it. That's one of the best handling front wheel drive chassis ever made bar none, period. I know where there's one. I know there's one for sale, I think. Yeah, well, I don't have any money, so it doesn't matter. It's not worth anything. HHRSS? No, they aren't worth anything. (laughs) HHRSS? Let's just not talk about it. Let's just move past it. I want one so bad. It's stupid. It's so cool. And so therefore it gets a pass. It's hilarious. It's stupid, Robbie. It's terrible. It's so funny. They took a panel van and they put... No, a supercharger on it. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. And then a turbo. You you can't even, like, there's a blind spot... A that's that's miles. why it's, it's stupid. It's GM, when they do stupid shit, is better. When they if, do dumb shit, GM is if, great. If when so- they try to make normal cars, they fuck it up completely. If someone is not wrong, I won't disagree. Compala SS, great car. Regular Impala, garbage. Hot garbage. Hot garbage. <laughs> All Trailblazer, Monte Carlos, Trailblazer. Garbage. Hot garbage. garbage. Trailblazer SS, great. Yes. All Monte Carlos, garbage. Regardless of SS or no. <laughs> Monte Carlo, Sucks. <laughs> High garbage. Straight up. Don't talk mostly to me if it was the made owner, after ni- it Mostly made because of the owner group is just, there's something Why do they all wear all. the jackets? People make fun what of Corvette wrong people with, with the of jackets. Them. Yeah, no, Monte Carlo Monte owners Carlo are SS always owners. weird. They're yeah. always super weird. One of my friends used to have a Dale Earnhardt edition one. What? They all but have like, that, like, he had it I, as a joke, and it was funny. They all have like that Do it for really Dale. bad mustache, you know what I mean? He's the one that came up with the Dale Earnhardt turn left for your, or turn right for your sins. I wanted to I wanted to get Radio podcast so bad with that the other day, but I kept it in because oh, I got a Dale Earnhardt poster. Yep. yep. Ah, our, Lord like, our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior Earnhardt. turned right for our sins. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. Bless, <laughs> bless it all who worship oh, him. We're going to get smited for sure. <laughs> it's funny. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, if someone came into this house right now and said, Rob, I got a 1995 Pontiac Grand Am 5-speed blue. You want to go for a spin? Fuck yeah! I want to go for, for a, a spin. You know, do you, do you know, a Beretta was before this. It was before that. Berettas are way worse. 
Do you fun fact because I knew somebody that had one of these. The dash vents. Oh, they're terrible. They spin. They <laughs> just, you just spin. no, no, no. But if you put it on high and you spin it, it it'll like, just keep spinning yeah, forever. It's forever. Cool. It's, like, it's awesome. And it like vibrates. The Isn't car. that great? It's no, worst it's garbage. Vent, worst vent design. Car sucks. Katie, Katie had one of those when we first got together. Hated that car. It was a I told giant you, it pile of hot garbage. I, I, <laughs> but it had like two hundred and fifty some thousand miles on it. it I don't care. Like I don't. They were bad when they this, were new. This car takes me back. Like, I'd have a good time. I, I wouldn't want to own it, and I, I, I wouldn't tell you. Robbie's how got like some ex girlfriend that that was a real good time that had one of those. That's why he likes it so much. You need to remove yourself emotionally from this conversation. That's a piece of shit. <laughs> it was blue. <laughs> <laughs> it was a two door too, wasn't it? It brings it, it, brings it, it back. It was a fucking two door. It, it was a two door. It was awesome. <laughs> she was she was from Sioux Center. No, she wasn't. There was, there was, she actually <laughs> wasn't. I, you'll never believe it, but she actually wasn't. Wow. She, she was from Hall of all oh. places. Oh god. <laughs> Can't date girls in your town, Robbie. I learned. I learned. No, after right. that. After fair. the grand damn girl. So that sucks. Uh so <laughs> she will forever be known as Grand Damn Girl. Malibu Alero Cutlass Grand Damn Olds Achieva. Which is, is a that? terrible name for something. <laughs> I don't know. It achieved nothing. It achieved nothing <laughs> other than for us to forget about it. And Fall then off into obscurity. The Buick Skylark. And not the one from no. My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> nope. Not the cool with the crazy boat tail thing. No. That's a great car. I think those were Skylarks, weren't they? Yes, no. but the one from My Cousin Vinny was from yeah, no, 1965. That yeah. would be like a 1972. Yeah, yeah. Marissa so. Tomei? Tomei? Marissa Tomei. Robbie has no idea what we're talking about. My cousin Vinny? Yeah. I never watched it. How dare you, sir? You call yourself a petrol head. That should be on your video, your list of I have petrol a co- I have a copy of this. Watch I it. Seen it. You own it and you've never seen it? Yeah. Of course you do. There's a couple of movies like that. <laughs> yeah, ones you pirated off the interwebs? No, I don't do that. Allegedly, no. Um, also on my list of terrible GM cars, 2004, 2008 Malibus, again, oddly enough, the Epsilon platform, which included the Saab 9.3, the Pontiac G6, the Saturn, and the, <laughs> the Cadillac BLS, which we didn't get here. <laughs> BLS? BL- Why would you call something a BLS? BLS. Yeah. Seriously. It's like the abbreviation for bullshit. <laughs> the Cadillac bullshit. The Fiat Chroma. Is a, what is that? Oh, there for in Malibu. The oh, okay. So Malibu Max would be included. Malibu in this. Max and great. the Opel Vectra. All suck. Terrible. All terrible cars. Even the Saab 93, which would, probably would have been a half decent car, um, they had some turbo oiling issues. Those were early Ecotech versions. You had to be. You couldn't just drive it like you drive a naturally aspirated car, pull it in the driveway, shut it off. You had to let it kind of <sighs> circulate and cool down and let the turbo spool down and all that fun shit. Yeah. A friend of mine learned that the hard way. Well, I remember when they had those turbo timers. Do they still do that? People do that? Yeah, it's a podcast. <laughs> well, no, not, it's not a podcast. But like, <laughs> oh. The, like, like, are turbo timers still a thing? I, remember I don't think so. Everyone had them in high school. I think people like, gave yeah. up on that needing to be a thing. Like you just you turn your car off and walk away and it runs for like three the minutes. The oil pump. Doesn't it? No, no the, the, whole, the whole car, whole car runs. Runs. The whole car I never had anybody with a turbo I re- timer. I remember in college sitting in a like a McDonald's or an Arby's or something like that and listening to somebody's Evo outside. <laughs> I'm like, I had a buddy. This is not a lifestyle I want to live, man. Yep. I'm I had a buddy with an, I had a buddy with an Eclipse and yeah, did the same thing. Just shut it off. You'd hear it. You take the key out, lock Way the door inside. Yep, bizarre think, thing. I think that's like. Blow off valves. I don't think they really need to be a thing. They don't need to be. You can design right. around it, right? But, but I think they, everybody they, got they sick sound of way cooler. Oh no! I I have a blow off valve on my turboed vehicle. I'm not getting rid of it anytime soon. But do you need one? I'm not convinced you do. No, I don't. So. Apparently, you don't need a turbo timer. No, for no, sure. Because no, no. yeah, I, I really have not seen one in. I didn't like know. Eight eight years. I genuinely had. I mean, I know what the concept was, but I thought you like had to have an electric water or oil pump included with it, and that it would just continue circulating oil. For a period of time, that's what I thought. They I'm were. sure that's one of them. I've never seen them. I just know the ones that left it's the car. Probably the more expensive version. My Veloster used to do that. Run so the oil pump. It had an electric pump that I could hear running. I think it would run. My Audi did. It would run something when you as well. Shut it down, and it may have run started running it when you unlocked it, or that may have been the fuel pump. I'm not sure, but there was there was definitely a pump running after you shut the Veloster off. My Audi had a huh. pump that ran as well, but I never did any amount of research to figure may out what it water. was. Could it have been water cooled? Very could well have been. Maybe, well, maybe it was a water pump. Then I don't know. Something was there. Was definitely a pump running. I never looked into it because I had a warranty and I didn't care. Right. So the Audi was because it never broke, and so it wasn't a priority. 
that also. Or you maybe it, on the or maybe it did break, but time. it wasn't it wasn't driving affecting, so I didn't care. You focus when you have an Audi, an old Audi. You you you, you touch the the main the detrimental things. Right, the right. You focus on failure, the things that work aren't that. working that keep me from getting to work the next day. The other stuff, you just do one of these, cross your fingers, right. and right. keep moving. Oh yeah, this little light of mine. <laughs> It's not a good lifestyle, man. No, I don't honest. miss it's it not. at all. I don't miss it at all, dude. Not even a tiny little bit. I'm 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 living that lifestyle right now because all four of my tire pressure sensors are failing. So it's either <sighs> easily it's, the most annoying <laughs> thing in the world. It tells me that my pressure's at ninety nine pounds or one pound or thirty five pounds. And then it shuts the light off. But then it comes back on. And then it shuts the light off. But then it comes back on. And it's the whole effing on the, time. On the avalanche? Yeah. But the tires are like new, so I assume they just cheaped out and replaced the tires and didn't replace the sensors. I didn't know you had to replace them. Is there like a it, periodic thing on that? They're not expensive. They're like $12. So, I mean, I don't know why you <sighs> wouldn't. But yeah, they're. I assume nobody did. Now they're worn out. I learned that some of those, maybe all of them, I don't know. I've never owned a vehicle with them. This is my but, first one. But but apparently, second, second one. when you're going around filling up air... When it gets to the proper pressure, the horn will honk. Oh, mine, on what? Mine doesn't. Do on, that. We have vehicle at work that does that. What? Yeah, that's brilliant. I didn't. I, know about I don't that. know if you have to like engage a mode or something, but I saw huh. somebody filling up their air in their tires, and then the vehicle would honk, and he went to the next tire. Son of a bitch! That you know, is it's clever. Do you know that high V's uh, air pump? You set it to a certain pressure, and then you hold it until it gets there, and then it shuts the thing off, and then you go to the next tire. That doesn't surprise me at all, either. That makes super, a lot of sense, It's also. super terrible. It doesn't do a very good job. It doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't supply enough air pressure. Well, it, it, it goes for a little bit, and then it stops, thinks about it. Then it puts pressure in oh, again, yeah, and it stops sucks. and thinks about it. It takes way longer. A lot of those pumps at the gas stations don't make very much pressure, because nope. you get like can, the dumbest human being that's ever lived, and I they pull in there, to that. and they try to put 900 pounds of pressure in a tire. Yeah. And they have a catastrophic failure, so the pump just makes 40 pounds or whatever. Yeah. So you can't if fill you need up, to go to 40, it takes forever. You can't fill up an air bubble before you go to an autocross day with at, at a Casey's. I can tell you that much. Yeah. So I always overfilled my slicks and then worked my way back from there. I get that. So. What's on your terrible list, Adam? Since uh, I've well, so all while, the GM we're, while we're while we're bitching about GM, I'm going to bitch about a car that I'm fairly certain both of you are going to argue with me about. But I think it's the worst of the two, the Saturn Sky. Uh, I think it's uglier than the Solstice. You're and wrong. Apparently, a lot of people think I'm wrong, but I think the Solstice is a significantly better looking car. You're wrong. The, sty- the, the styling on the Saturn Sky is, is so, so much bad. Better. It's so much it's, better. It is so much better. The Pontiac looks like they. they it's all it. right. Look at that. It's, I love it's it. Square. It's it's. The, you guys, you just continuity. said you love it to the sky, right? No, I said I'm. I love the Solstice. This is the sky. I know. I hadn't even looked over there to see your. Oh, picture. don't right. even give me that. It's no, the continuity Solstice. of styling. This is excluding again the GXP. We're not talking about the GXP because no. it looks different. The continuity of styling not on the sky. Different is far superior and in some ways actually looks somewhat like the Cadillac XLR. Yes. It's it's square, it's aggressive. The Pontiac always looked feminine to me. Without a doubt. It's just it's kind of Miata. I like it better. It's, it, no, I think it's, it's so it's much like, better. It's such a like dialed back weak ugly version. It's, it's like just s- sad. So my we owned one of those in 06 when they came out. Yep. Terrible little cars. Desperately want one. I understand. I want, Why were they I want a Saturn Sky. So with the top up, the trunk has like 1.6 cubic feet of storage space in it. Nice. And then you can put the top in that trunk. And that's it. Well, it was like <laughs> 0.3 cubic feet or something like that with the top down. Uh, the not turbo model, abysmally slow, frankly. Um, but... I think LS is just like fall into them. Yeah, yeah, it is a GM product, so all you have to do is change motor mounts and drop yeah. it in. Yeah. I, or just get the turbo one. I'm fairly certain that that car was designed specifically with that in mind, and then it never happened. I knew that people bought the car new at the dealership, and the first thing they did was pull the engine out. So I can't I can't promise this is true, but I'm, I've been told and never researched it enough to confirm. Sounds like a conspiracy to me. That Continue. the <laughs> rear end of that car is a, is a CTS-V. Oh, that'd be awesome! Like the the yeah, actual yeah. rear end, and so putting an LS in it is just a matter of a motor mounts and a tranny. 
Like you don't have to worry about it because that rear end's already built to handle an LS. Right. Yeah, that'd be so. awesome. Yeah, I've always wanted to LS swap a Saturn Sky. There was a company called Mallet that made one like this crazy wide body kit for it. That was called like the Hammer or Sledgehammer or something like that. So cool. I'll see if I can find it real quick. So. Yeah, I gotta strongly disagree with you on that yeah, one. You're absolutely you're yeah. wrong. No, I think it's you're a better up, looking you're, car. You're straight up. So wrong. the Saturn Sky is it falls under my bad category. So did you find it, Robbie? Uh yes. So it Yeah. It's wide body. It's pretty rad. Are you kidding me? That's barely super a wide body. It. Scroll, I don't think that's that, I don't think that's the the right one. Well it says mallet on it. Mallet well, they made a bunch of different renditions. This has got a V8 in it. Yeah. So that was the other thing is they specialized in V8 conversions. That looks like teriyaki boys. That's exactly what that looks <laughs> it's like. Pretty, it's, dun, pretty dun, 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 dun. it's pretty racer. It's pretty racer. But you like. know where it would fit in real well? Hot Any, import nights. Your local drift event. Heck yeah. I think these would be awesome autocross cars. I think they'd be... I really do want one. Like if, if they were a price that I could afford, I absolutely would own one for my race car. So are Saturn Skies not sought after or super sought after? Because there's are there less think, of them. I don't think anybody gives a flying fuck about those cars. Yes. Get one, Robbie. I want one. And uh, I don't know about the Sky, but I can tell you the Solstice, there's two options when you're looking to buy a, sky, a Solstice. There is automatic and salvage title. Those are the two <laughs> options. There is no such... I'm convinced there's no such thing as a manual that is not salvaged. So. Really? People got a little out of control with the manuals or something. They I don't snap know, around. dude. I don't know. We never had that much trouble with it when we owned it. Hmm. Even the NA ones, the two, because they came with a two four or a two liter turbo. If we had a manual two four in ours, because the first year they were only offered with the two four and only offered with the manual. Hmm. That was the so. car that you could take the turbo version. Before it even left the dealership for five hundred dollars, and they could turn up the torque like seventy five foot pounds with the warranty get, still you could attached. You get a factory with a launch control, a two step, and a flat foot shift. No lift shift. And it was like five hundred dollars. It was oh. a factory too. There's no. There's if I owned a dealership, there is no way a single vehicle would leave the law without that <laughs> option. I would have had a standard Just, option. When you guys take the take the that's shit off of the, the carpet, PDI. you pull that directly into there. You pay that's, that tech to put him shit. Put that on do there. It. That's part of your post delivery inspection. Yep. Oh, seven. None of these are leaving with less than three hundred foot pounds of torque. You understand me? <laughs> they have to have it. <laughs> Robbie, oh, find one. Oh seven sky, ten grand. Oh eight sky redline turbo, seventeen thousand dollars. That is a lot of money. Craigslist money. I, I don't know what it's like at a dealer, but that's Craigslist, that's kind of a, that's kind of a lot of money. You Still, know what I would rather have? Like a lot. You know what I'd rather have? C five Corvette. Absolutely. Yeah, well, seventeen thousand dollars is a one. lot for a sky. The red the redline would be the GXP version. Yes, the redline is the turbo car. Yeah. But still, I would much and rather a lot have, of those. I would much rather have a Z06. A lot of those are automatic. Yeah, no, auto tragic. Not doing that. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, you got more? I have one more. Okay. The VW Rutan, which is a okay. minivan. It is literally. Oh, the literally. The Crouton, the VW Crouton. Uh, R O U T A N, yep. Robbie. Literally a Dodge Grand Caravan with a Volkswagen badge on it. Uh, of course, you know about questions. this. Questions. Uh, why didn't you buy one of these? Because I totally forgot that this existed. Because they're fairly new and not cheap, I don't think. Oh. No, it's not the generation so it's, that you it's bought. Got the it's the terrible, yeah. It's got the terrible Pentastar motor in it, and then I assume that VW took them and was like, "These Dodge electronics, they're probably a little too reliable for our customer base, <laughs> so we need to take them all out and put a bunch of shitty fucking electronics in there." And then with Dodge's shitty motor and our shitty electronics, this will be a great seller. They didn't sell any, Robbie. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> Plus, they were expen- They were more expensive. Well, I think, yeah, yeah. Well, so really, I think what it boiled down to was G- or Volkswagen was like, boy, Americans love themselves a minivan, but we don't have one. What should we do? Well, Dodge has got a whole bunch. Let's buy those. All right. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Yeah, that'll work. They don't even look mildly different. No, it's the same. No, it's like they changed the grill. That's they it. They changed the grill because the badge was probably built in on the grill for the Dodge badge. They couldn't like get rid of it without completely swapping it out. Right. So they just 3D printed a bunch of new ones and glued them in place. No, they plastic mold cheaply. Whatever. It's hot garbage. Yeah, this car sucks. That, that is a terrible vehicle. Most so, definitely. Uh, the only other one I had on my list was the XLR, so we beat that horse already. 
Yeah, because it's awesome. It's a great vehicle. <laughs> Most of your bad list was good, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I figured was going to happen. So, yeah. Robbie, you got any bad list that hasn't been covered? I don't think so. Like, I was just kind of shocked at. Oh, I got a good one we forgot. Ooh. What's that? Bring it on. The Acura Honda NSX. That's okay. Weird. It's weird that they had two I different. I don't know that that's really badge engineered so much as they just sold them as Acuras here. Yeah, that's probably true. That's why I didn't put Integra on my list of good. Ooh. For some strange reason I, here okay. lately, yep. I've really, really been jonesing for an Acura Integra. You can't. F- they're all trashed. There's, yeah, <laughs> so they're all ninety nine percent of them are all rusted. Destroyed. They're all rusted as hell, or they have cut springs and they've been destroyed by some eighteen year old Honda boy. Yeah, see, I've I've never seen one that's either not full blown race car or high garbage. Right. I would say ninety percent of all Integras is still working. However, you want to define that, driving around have cut springs on them. Yeah. Absolutely, and I don't know. So I I looked long and hard for one of these when I had phrasing when I <laughs> when I was looking for a car, and uh, the only one I found that I thought might have been a decent purchase was a four door, and I didn't want that. Although it was probably the more logical purchase, I wanted. It was also an automatic, so it nah. was enough knocks against it. I wasn't going to buy it. Ooh, a four door manual Integra would have been pretty sick. They are out. I would have been. Yeah. I would have been. They down are out that. there. What did What did these come with? Engine wise, those are B series motors. B-series, that's a good I think motor, mostly. Right? Is that a good motor? So, I think so. All right, so not I'm, not, I'm not a Honda guy. Yeah, by any stretch, which is probably why there's like a few people are just their minds are exploding right now because I want one. This, yeah, if they listen to this podcast, they know that we are fans of Honda. Correct. It's a, it's a, it's a Honda spoon engine. I don't dislike Honda. I just don't want one. Right? Like it's the owner group for the most. Same thing with Subaru. <laughs> Although I dislike Jeez. Subaru a little more than Honda. <laughs> Take that, fans! As a car. While we're at it, Miatas also suck. Who else we got? I don't think who we've held any punches podcast? on those. Who, who, who else this is? Seriously, this all the LSs. Seriously hate the 240 group. <laughs> LSs group. are dumb. That's why I sold you know mine. What's, you They're know what's stupid. great, though? Lifter ticks a real bitch. Turbo, not turbo that. dodges. Those are great. No. They're so small, Ravi. Don't pick on them. Just don't. <laughs> it's a small group. There's only like just four of us. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. If they're here, just let them listen, That's Ravi. Fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but, uh... I think so. I know that you had the Type R, which is like the king. Yep. And then there was like the GSR, and I'm not sure what the difference was between the Type R and the GSR. Maybe I like GSR we didn't slower. get a Type R here in America. We just got a GSR. I'm not really sure. I know Josh Jones used to own a GSR, and it was pretty fast. Sure. And yeah. then there's just like a base model, and I think they all had varying degrees of B series in them. People, somebody's really angry. At like, I'm just gonna tell you right now, like, like this description, maybe, I don't think's correct. I think some of them had VTEC, some of them didn't. I don't fucking know. They, no, they all had VTEC. No. All of them. No, I can almost guarantee you that's not true. Didn't? Couldn't you get a K Integra? I'm pretty sure you could get a K Integra. James Houghton has a K and his, so they must have came that way. Then, right? I think all all the the Type R's were. I think were there, was a, there was an SI also, and it was definitely a K. <laughs> The VTEC means you get extra RPMs, right? Like you can it's go to like yeah. 20,000 20, 20, RPMs. Almost it's 20, not yeah. that much, but it's probably 11,000. Yeah. <laughs> They're like F1. Don't over exaggerate, Robbie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was. It also there means was, more horsepower, right? Right means, off the top. It means, yeah, all your horsepower is built at the top. Everybody knows that. I, I, uh. <laughs> Trigger alert. So, anyway. Well, it was nice was having that? your fans for a while. Um,. Should we move on now that we've offended everybody? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do some news. Let's do some news. Uh, first one here. NASCAR may be for sale. Hush, hush, secret, secret. Did you see this anywhere else? Uh, yeah. Did uh, it come up on all, some every, of the other every news, news outlet? Sources? I literally was about to add it, opened up the sheet, and there it was already. Uh, because Bloomberg's let me down. Other, <laughs> other than the, uh, what was the other thing that they said about the Edge ST? Oh, shredded. 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 The shredded. Shredded. They shredded. So shredded the track. They shredded the track. Other than that let down, Bloomberg for sure has let me down. Apparently, they do not want me to read their website anymore. Damn it, um, Robbie. What? It's, it's no eating on the podcast. Robbie, look. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Robbie. <laughs> Reuters. Are those uh, voiced, Robbie? <laughs> I'm going to edit this part out and then give it to him, and he's going to have to figure out what to do with the video. <laughs> Just to really piss him what off for that. <laughs> so Reuters broke the story that uh, NASCAR has been in discussions with Goldman Sachs about finding a buyer for their 
basically the company, the whole thing, the racing series. Not just the racing series, like they own like all the racing series. Like they're they got their hands in IMSA. They own a bunch of their tracks, like, and low, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. They're involved in what Daytona. And I think they of, own Iowa Speedway. Really? I think so. Did NASCAR buy that? Who I owned it so. originally? Uh, I don't know. Uh, IndyCar, maybe? No, it's a... Uh, oh, he drives the blue car. Oh, that's right. It was a driver. A uh, driver built I it. I think he designed it. I don't know. Richard he, Petty. I don't know that he built it. I know he does. Oh, oh, yeah, maybe it was... I think Petty owned it, it and I, then he may I have sold it to NASCAR. somebody else d- was designing a bunch of those tracks, though. Another I driver. I don't remember. Yeah, that was but a that was I'm a pretty while, sure that NASCAR owns them. Owns that track. They own a bunch of those. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, well... Bill France, senior, started the company in 1948, and uh, it's still owned by the France family. And they say people don't want to watch NASCAR anymore, so they're they're getting out of the game. It's a bold strategy. Quit while you're ahead. Mm. Yeah, just to, just take your hundreds. I of guess you should have quit ten years ago if you wanted to quit while you were ahead. But I yeah, I guess so. It. I mean, if you really wanted to save it or salvage it or do something with it that. You know, no, appeal yeah. to people or just not appeal to as many people. Here's a, here's a really weird concept that, people, you know, companies don't really understand, but you can downsize. Like, it's not the end of the world. I know but, I know. we're money. always about building. Got to be bigger, money. got to be bigger, got to be yeah, bigger, got to be bigger, got to be bigger, got to be bigger. But, you know, like, is it the end of the world? So this is, at the time anyway that I read this, when Reuters published it, the this was a private discussion that had been had between NASCAR and Goldman Sachs, so somebody leaked it. Um, International Speedway Corporation, which owns over half the tracks that the NASCAR Cup Series uses, they were saying that their their admissions, so like their attendance or emissions dollars, was down 1.6% last year. 1.6? 1.6%. That doesn't seem like an alarming number. It's, I'm sure it's a huge dollar amount, but that's... I don't know if that's even statistically different. Yeah. Than 2016. Yeah. 1.6%. I, I don't know what the I numbers are I wouldn't are exactly. worry about that. I mean, I'd, I'd use well, it. Well, who like, knows? I mean, maybe it's been 1.6% for the last 10 years, too. Yeah, that's, possible. that's possible. But, I mean, it's it's not like it's shrinking at a massive rate. Right. 10% a year. They're not losing. Yeah, they're not losing 10% a year, at least. Right. <clears throat> so, I. but, you know, I could also see if I was probably a multimillionaire or a billionaire, I could see just, I'm done with this. Well, I'm yeah. out of here. And I'd imagine they don't have the passion that, like, you know, their great grandfather had or grandfather had when he started it. So, I mean, they're like, I got a couple hundred million in the bank. I could yeah. just, I could coast the rest of my that's life. worth? Several billion dollars, yeah, probably. Because what, what did uh, F1 get bought for? Do you know how much that, that uh, Ooh, Liberty Media said? Several set? billion dollars. How, I mean, how many billion was it? Like two billion or yeah. higher? I don't even want to. Well, they, they, like, the Patriots are valued at a billion. Oh, eight billion. Eight Ugh. more than eight billion. It says. I was gonna say. I thought I was thinking seven, but even that didn't sound right. That's crazy. I wonder what the reach for Formula One is versus NASCAR. I think Formula One's bigger because it's international, it's wor- yes. worldwide. I so. think. I think that because globally, it is for sure a larger motorsport. Maybe not in America. For sure, not in America. So let's let's cut it in half. NASCAR gets, is worth four billion. So do you think? Do you even think that's a pretty good payday? Oh, do you yeah. think there are more viewers for F1 in 2018 than there were in 2016? 18 versus 16? Or 17 or whatever. Do you think the viewership rate for F1 is increasing? I th- I think it took a decline. I think it's back up. I, 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 think, can't, I have no reason to think. Since, I, guess, I guess since Liberty Media took over and they're, they're making it a av- more available to consumers. I think it's gone up. Okay. Absolutely. Because that's really the problem with NASCAR is availability. So, I think that by the end of this year, Formula One will be bigger than it is right now at this very second. Because of two things. Number one, so far, this season has been ridiculous. It's been a good season. It's been a hell of a season. Yeah. And number two, so allegedly, as of Spain, they will be releasing a streaming service and an app that you can buy. There you and go. you can watch Formula One races. It's twelve ninety nine a month or something like that. And you can watch Formula One races on your phone or wherever. I don't know where they're all going to be yet. Well, I think but- it- I don't know about watch ESPN, but like you could, that's on ESPN too. So I mean, it's yep, and it's commercial free on uh, it's commercial free on watch ESPN. Nice. Is there a replay? I think so. I don't. I've never actually. I feel watched like that replay. would be critical. <laughs> like if you're a legit, I, I feel like racing series should really focus on having a replay. Without a doubt. Like Formula Drift, give needs, me a replay. Oh, needs a replay. Give me a replay that doesn't have all those commercial break 
non-commercial commercial breaks in it. But even if you have somebody just, just put, throw string on, it together on YouTube. Just throw them on YouTube as an archive. Literally pay an intern $14 an hour to cut the commercial break out. Do you even a, have to pay an intern? Editing. Legally, I'm not sure. It depends Maybe the, not. It depends on the profession, I think. I don't know about media. You probably don't have probably to. Don't have to I was going to say, they don't make any money. Everybody, everybody in media allegedly. is broke, so yeah, that's what they claim. You have to pay them in media. So yeah, couldn't can you you know get some college intern to? Cut, oh, it would take yeah. like it would take like no time at all, It'd and then just and then easy. just repost it. Yeah, take take the live one down, put the put the put the, that one back up. Uh huh. I, I just think that that's really important because it, it's just like it, Netflix. Not everybody can watch everything when it's on. That's why Netflix is so popular. Is that you right. can watch TV series when you're available to watch it. So I really don't think that that's rocket science. They could put that together. No, it's. I think archives are are real important too because I think so. Like if I if I decide to dive headlong into F one because it it seems like it's real real interesting this year and and you know that seems to be a good race to follow. I don't want to be able to go back and watch some like highlight races from the last thirty years or whatever. And currently, I don't think that that's easy to legally do. Yeah, probably not. No. Probably some stuff on YouTube, but yeah, I think that uh, it's not very much. Which no. I never understood that. Why would you take the time to produce a program? Well, Formula for One a show. was real behind Technology. on the way that they managed their media, and that was one of the things that Liberty Media wanted to change. But what I'm not sure is whether or not when they purchased F1, if they got all that old the stuff, or, or if that's still. I wonder if that's part of like the F1 Bernie's. App. I can't imagine Bernie's got that. That would have been, that had to be part of it. I would hope so. I would have wanted him out completely, one hundred percent. So, I don't know where it's at on the NASCAR thing either. So, no. yeah, we'll see what comes of this. There's not a lot of information right now because, as I said, it was a leaked story. Insider gave this information to some reporters. So, before I move on to this next story, I'm gonna open this Lacroix here real quick. Oh, God it's delicious. damn it! I'm gonna eat this candy. You eat that candy. <laughs> I just I just finished my bottle of water, Joe. It's just, my third one today. Up next, F1 rulebook is too complicated to keep up on its own rules. I think that's uh, kind of an overstatement. I would like to see the the rule book. Is the, is the rule book available? I didn't. The look. Formula One site has like I won't call it a rule book, but they have kind of a dumbed down version of it for the general consumer. So you probably can't like if I wanted to get the rule book, like yeah. Formula Drift, I can just go to their website and it's there and it's fifty. Formula pages One or has like a, a a bunch on there, but I don't think it's like. All inclusive. I'm on their rules website right now. Rules and regulations. It says what's new, tires and wheels, powertrains, penalties. Yeah, this is kind of for somebody watching on yep. TV that's maybe slightly the more technical interested. specs are not there. Yeah, in my opinion. I bet if you there, if you know a guy, I'm sure you can like you know race car engineering the magazine or something like that probably has them. I bet it's out there. I don't know that it's that secret, but maybe they just don't want people perusing through well, there for whatever reason the average person doesn't need to be able to get to the technical specs of a formula one car because it's not like they're building one nor will they whereas understand a it. formula drift you you know you could aspire to to be there yeah you could yeah, certainly you could build two. a car there's regular joes in formula two or pro-am i i think we know people that could compete at that level I yeah. don't know anybody who could compete could who could compete at a formula one you're level. telling me robbie can't build us an f1 car in his garage i mean I, I would love well, to lay down, like that. Of course, I would not. love to lay down the gauntlet and see that happen. But if anybody wants to sponsor my uh, garage, uh, you can call me directly. F one extravaganza over at Robbie's house. Good so time. for 2017, there was a rule change that allowed the cars to be 200 millimeters wider. Yep. And the concern was there was another rule somewhere in the rule book that that I don't even know why the rule read this way because it's stupid <laughs> yep. but the rule basically said there can't be any holes or slits or cuts in the floor pan but it read that it banned holes in the floor pan 700 millimeters from the center line of the car which at the time was the edge of the right the, so of basically the it says you can't so it didn't say center of the car it said center line of the car right why would you write a rule that said that <laughs> you know I could, I could see like oh it's 700 millimeters from the center of the car so if you want them in the front or the back, that's fine. You just can't put them on the sides. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? I could I could get down with that. But yep. why would you write this rule specifically? So if you change another rule, this rule somewhere else in the rule book also needs to be addressed. And who's the keeper for making sure this doesn't happen? Whoever that is didn't 
They didn't keep. He didn't keep. He He's looking for a job, if that's the case. So now there's holes in the edge of the F1 cars because they can legally put... The on last, the, like, 200 millimeters or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the, the last be, 100 millimeters on each side. They right. can put slits or vents or which, whatever they want. Which adds downforce on the bottom end. They can direct air places that yep. they couldn't before. It makes the tires less uh, squirmy, I think is what they described it as. So... So the idea was kudos to kudos to them to figure it out. And the idea <laughs> was to keep development costs down because underbody gets really compl- more complicated than any other specific part right. of aero. And so they were trying to limit the amount of development you could do underbody. Well, isn't underbody aero less interrupted by like dirty air? I don't know that there's any specific place that's less interrupted than another. Exactly. I would think. I, I, maybe I misread it or maybe I don't misinterpreted it somewhere, but yeah, for some reason, I, it was my understanding that you know, like the bigger wings are more interrupted by the dirty air. So if you have a flat, you know, like you're yeah. a well, de- well engineered bottom, you, you know, you you could. That's right, <laughs> that's right. But you like if, if the, Robbie yeah. picks up girls, you know that, right? Yeah, well engineered bottom. As, as Robbie in a bar, <laughs> you have a well engineered bottom. <laughs> I don't know. Pick why up that lines by Rabbi. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why. I heard it and I let it go, and you started laughing. (laughs) But then I could just see Robbie awkwardly walking up to a girl at the bar. This is is back in his college days. Oh man, I had no game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, just like slightly buzzing Robbie, you know, just Just slightly like two beers, Robbie, two Bud Lights down, Robbie's down for. You have a well-engineered bottom. It's nice. That is a nice compliment, though. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's me. (laughs) But I think what they. God, where, where the hell was I reading this? Someone was saying that if they oh. if they wanted to keep costs down, they would just basically regulate the bottom end of the car, and the, or I guess regulate the top end of the car and allow them to do more air on the bottom end because it would make for more uh, more competitive racing because the dirty air wouldn't affect it as much. And I might have totally misconstrued that whole conversation, but I still think they need to just dial back the downforce. Agreed. Just bring it back a notch. If you don't want to, if you don't want the cars to lose too much speed, then I mean, I'm sure there's. I don't think the wider tires at this point are really going to do much, but like they've outlawed things like active suspension and stuff like that. Yeah, there's some other stuff out there they could probably do. Maybe allow them more engines so that they can turn them up more, something like that. But dial back that downforce. Yeah, you're not, I you're, love you're, downforce. Yeah. It's like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. They're not doing time attack. They're back, racing man. other. They're racing other cars. Bring back the V tens. Make them. Loud. I still think that. <laughs> I still think that my idea of like give them a fuel consumption limit and let them go wild. If you can build a V ten or a two cylinder that's competitive, be do my it. guest. I don't care what you do. Here's how much fuel you get. They kind of did that, didn't they? They they have a fuel limit. There is no yeah. refueling in a Formula One race, and there's only so much flow rate you're allowed in. Oh yeah, I'm with you. I understand what you're saying. So, what would happen if they did that? Do you think Formula One would fall apart because Force India couldn't couldn't develop the the crazy forty miles to the gallon V10 engine that Mercedes would try to build? I mean, what's the difference between it now? I mean, they're not competitive now. Force India is not, you know, knocking on the back end of Lewis Hamilton's car. Do you think that they would just pack it up and say we're um, we're not even going to try? No, but I think if they want to make it competitive, I th- what they real like besides the stuff we've already mentioned. My biggest thing is that the money that they give to teams just for being that team and like, like for being Ferrari the, and Mercedes, the, the money that they give to Ferrari and Mercedes just for being in the series. Versus the money they give to Force India is fucking insane. It's like I don't have the numbers. Like in front double. Of me. It's way. It's like they'll give. Like I think. God, fuck. What was it? Like 110 million dollars went to Ferrari just for being in the series. Like that's what they get every fucking year. And then Force India gets like 10. What if they? Why would they just make that level playing field? If you're in Formula One, you all get this much, same amount of money. And then it's a up lot to of, you how much you invest. A lot of professional ball sports have like salary caps and stuff like that. Don't absolutely. They? Oh, abs- absolutely. I mean, it'd be real hard to govern, I suppose. But that's a tricky one because their argument's going to be that Mercedes and Ferrari bring in more revenue than right. Force India does. So I, yeah, I yeah, don't. No, but I, yeah, no, I see your point though. I mean, it seems really. It seems like you're penalizing the new guys again for that. Yeah. Like how how are you ever going to compete? Right. 
Unless you've got some sort of angel investor that's just going to dump billions of dollars into his F1 team. Right. It's not really a thing anymore. No. Nah, no. And there's only so many Gene Haases in the world. <laughs> yep. And he's not doing that well. Fair. So. This has got to be like one of your favorite news stories ever, Adam. This is oh. like, this is this is totally your deal. Okay. No, this. Oh, the Ferrari thing? Yeah, well, the cheating, well, not cheating, not but cheating. finding loopholes in rule books. It is kind of my, my thing. It's almost as good as the pinhole in the... In the, uh, in the shocks. In the shocks. That, Except that's that one. was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of not cheating. Does it say specifically that the ride height must be maintained throughout the entirety of the... That's like literally NASCAR in a... Like, in a nutshell. In just a like, nutshell. Here's the rule or book. Like, We're there's find a lot a of road it. racing, like SCCA guys that do that. They'll Jeez. have cars that sit up high, and when they're out on the track, they squat down, and you use bump stops as your, <laughs> as your suspension. I mean, that's that's normal. Wow. My favorite thing about the guy putting the pinholes in the shocks to drop the ride height, um, then they put that fake container in there, that fake aluminum canister with in there wires with wires out coming it? out of it so that everybody's like, what the fuck's that? What's that container? Why have I never seen what, that before? What are they doing? What's going on? That, that's the part of it that's truly brilliant to me. It's, it's truly like, brilliant. So you cheated, but then you put a decoy in there so that everybody's like, what the fuck is that? Why is he so fast? It's that container, man. It's like, whatever's in there, all those wires. It's brilliant. <laughs> Toyota's cheat in rallying is still my favorite. They had, uh, so you had a restrictor on your intake. Oh, yeah. And they had one that, where the plate, where it mounted, like the, the mounting was on springs. And when the engine was sucking air through it, it would pull it open and allow more air around it. Genius. Is essentially how it worked. But then when you're off and you're being tech inspected. It's closed. It snaps shut. It's great. I love it. That's that's good. It's not even cheating at that point. Just, 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 let, just let them do just it. Just let them have it. That's just good engineering. You just, you Worry about it next year in yeah. the rules. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, is that it for F1? Yeah. yeah. Hyundai now sells its Genesis line at all dealers. I'll be honest. I wasn't really aware that they were selling it as Genesis. Uh, I was, <laughs> and I was not particularly pleased about it when I bought mine because they told me that they were not getting a Genesis dealer in Des Moines. Oh. Which means they were, I couldn't like get a new Genesis right. without going to the Quad Cities or something. Could you have it serviced? I assume they can service all... I assume that, yeah. Okay. Well, yes, technically, because yes. The answer is yes. Did you buy it at question. the Hyundai dealer here in town? Yes. Okay. Because that's all we have. So so basically, they had well, a 2018... Know, like if someone had traded it into the Buick dealer or something. Oh, no, like no, that. no. No, I bought okay. it from the dealer that sold it, I believe. Okay. Now, they had a 2018 G80 there, G80 there Sport. That was the $66,000 one. They Uh-oh. said they said that's the last one they were going to get. They said that's the only one that we have. So this... They're not going to freaking sell it because they've got one. Yeah. You know what I mean? If somebody they'll, wants they'll, a new they'll, one... They'll mark it up. You can't, you can't go to... Like, oh, I want to look at some... Oh, we have one, sir. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's not how people buy cars. They buy... They look at different trim levels and all that shit. So, now the caveat of this... Or I, I should go back. So, basically, if you wanted to sell the Genesis line, you had to build a separate store, and you had to have sold a G90. That was... Really? And then you had to be selected... Because there wasn't many that they are going to let do it. Only 100. What is What is yours? It's an 80. A G80? Yeah. Okay. So what's the difference? The 80 is the... So like the, the Genesis... Okay, so the, the Genesis sedan and the G80 are the same thing. Right. The... Especially like 20... Because when it was 2015, they were just marketed as a Genesis. Yes. 2016, it was a Genesis. 2017, it was a G80. And then moving forward, it's a G80. Because okay. at the time, they had the Genesis and the Equus. Right, so, so the Equus be, is now a G ninety. Yeah, okay, that's basically all oh, okay. it is. So that, it was like going to be names, and then they decided we're going to make a brand, and we'll just get rid of the Equus and call it the G ninety. What's a, what's a, what's that cost? A G ninety? Are they like significantly more? Uh, yeah, the one in Quad Cities had one. I think it was eighty. Hmm. But it's like a actual S class competitor. Oh, like yeah. it's got all the bullshit in the back, like yeah, yeah. massaging yeah. seats yeah, and all you, that crap. You don't, when you own that, you don't actually drive it. That's the idea, which I don't understand. I don't That's understand weird. that because nobody that buys a G90 is not going to drive it. I could see buying an S Class or a Maybach and not driving it. Right. But if you right. spend $80,000 on like a car, a, you don't quite have enough money like to have somebody else drive it. Or yeah. something like that. 
Don't. Yeah. It's more like Brett, like, oh, look, I'm so seats in the back. Like, okay, that's <laughs> really stupid, but. My kids are so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shitheads that they are. Yeah, yeah congratulations. Exactly. So that, so they were only going to let 100 dealers in the U.S. have these, which I thought was really stupid. I was like, let. It's exclusive, bro. Yeah, but exclusive doesn't sell cars when you have no brand recognition. <laughs> like, that's not cool. No. So, but anyway, you still have to build a separate sales and service facility. I don't know if they can be attached. I don't know if you can take your dealership and run a wall down the middle of it yeah, and call it, it good. Is or, it going to be like Ford and Lincoln? I think so. Or, or Toyota when, and Lexus. I mean. So when, um, was it, oh, when Alfa Romeo, or was it Alfa Romeo or was it Fiat came in? I can't remember. But they said basically you have to build a separate dealership to sell these. Really? Yeah. So it was what here's the same. Was it? No, maybe it wasn't. It must not have been those then. Well, there's a Fiat Alpha dealer here, and then there's well, no, a no, Dodge sorry. dealer here. Now I remember. It was when, yeah, it was Dodge. So if you were if you were a, if you were a Dodge, Chrysler dealer or a Dodge dealer, you, you had, had to, to build, build a separate a Fiat, Fiat dealership. Yeah. And then, yeah. That Which would, a bunch of them were like, see. I'm not building a separate dealership to sell a $13,000 500 that I'm not even sure anybody's going to want to buy. Right. So that, that tripped them off when they came out of the gate, started selling Fiats here, that that was kind of stupid. Because you had to put in a big commitment to sell a cheap car. This is a big commitment to sell an expensive car. I wonder if there's any more profit margin in that than in a 500. In the G80? I mean, I know it's an expensive car, but it's probably also very expensive to manufacture. So, I mean, is there really any more? Well, profit margin is a percentage. Right. So a percentage of 66,000 is a lot bigger than 13. Well, I mean, you know it could I mean? still be you could still be making two grand a car if it costs you, you know. I mean, I I don't know, but if they're making two grand selling G80s, that'd be that'd be, that'd bad. be a surprise. That'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> that'd definitely be a bad. Not not a good business model, but so yeah, anyway, that's but if Ford claimed they're not making any money on their sedans. Yeah, well, there you go. Which is interesting because now uh, Genesis and Kia are both making rear wheel drive sedans. They make any fuck ton of money and and selling a bunch of them. I just find that hmm. I find that interesting. Speaking of conspiracies, hmm. Hmm. he goes. Hmm. So anyway, that's it for that. Okay. Nearly all of Ferrari's lineup is sold out through 2019, except the like one car I didn't even realize is still made. Which one's that? Well, what is the uh, one that's not sold out? I don't remember even now. It's been the GTC4 Luso. Yes, the GTC4 Luso is the only one that's not sold out in their lineup. That is bizarre. Right now, I'm surprised they don't. They yeah, I'm surprised they make that car. I didn't know they I still made it. Thought that was a limited run thing. I thought that was yeah, because that's like a their f- air quotes four four door family car, isn't it? Isn't that what the GTC four is? Let's look it up, Seriously. man. You'd never hear shit about this car. No, I don't. I don't know anything even about know this car. if I'm. It's like a shooting brake. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was the not F12. What's the other one that they were making for a while? That was rad. FF. Yes, is the, the FF F- is the FF replacement. Can you show me a picture of it, Robbie? That's a bad picture. Hold on. That's, yeah, that's weird. I didn't realize that, that so, they were still making it. Maybe that's why they're not sold out, because nobody knows they make it. Or cares. Or cares. Because that's not what you go to Ferrari to buy. Typically, no. So I've never even seen one of these ugly things. Oh, my God. It's terrible from the side. It is really not. I like shooting brakes, and that's not good. No. It's not good at all. I can see why that's not sold out. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Now that I think about it, every time I've been, when I've gone to Chicago and been to the Ferrari dealership, I've never seen one. No. They Funny, never, so they're not buying them. There Funny was how that none works, of them in California it? either. I wonder if they're getting an allocation. Probably went to like four different supercar dealerships and not a single one. I had. saw an Enzo. Didn't see I don't think I've ever right. seen an FF either. I think the I FF the did okay. Because it was novel at the time. Right. And now everybody's over it. Yeah. If you want. Everybody who wanted one got an FF, and now this this thing's just like, eh. The weird thing about that is why would you buy that instead of an F12, like a regular F12? Well, because I'm pretty sure it's got a back seat. You can put your car seat in but and I, take your kids. Does the F12 not have a back seat? Oh, is it? No, the it'd be the, this would, that would be like a 612 replacement. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, my point still stands, though. <laughs> like, if you're going to buy a Ferrari, why are you really worried about... Are you, are you taking your toddler to school in it? I feel like if you're buying a Ferrari, you probably have a Bentley GT also. At least. So you're or, probably not that worried about or the Or a G80. Seat. Or, or a G80 <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, or, G, or G90. G90. Sorry. Yeah, 90. What do you think, Robbie? So does this mean that they're just going to make their cars more expensive? 
Because the exclusivity. Well, there's, I think a, they, there's a waiting. They list. always put a like a number cap on their cars. That's because if you have less than ten thousand car, ten thousand cars that you sell, you don't have to ab- abide by the uh, gas mileage and um, there's requirements. There's fewer standards you have to meet in Europe. Ah, fair enough. It's 10,000 is the number? 10,000 yep. is the number. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. So I, I That's was, right. I you would... couldn't read this article, could you? I could not read this article. <laughs> I forgot about Damn you, that. Bloomberg. <laughs> Throw my whole game off. Seriously, Bloomberg was my jam for information. This was like that. your... I'm totally screwed. That's why, there's, that's why there's a article. Reuters article on here. Because I'm trying to find a damn replace. I'm not paying $35 a month for Bloomberg. No, 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 no. It's so stupid. So, um, I also... So they're still talking about building an electric car or an electric like, like, a hybrid car, and yep. they're still talking about building an SUV, right? And they want to build those cars because they're going to be able to sell more with those cars. But it sounds to me like they can't. Um, not without well, maybe selling less of another one. Maybe if they figure out this electric car thing, they can. They're yeah, hoping they're, they're going to boost their average. Oh, they're going to bring maybe their average they could up. break that ten thousand mark. Maybe that's why. Or maybe they're buying points Tesla's, off of Tesla's, Tesla's EPA <laughs> credits. Well, they wouldn't be EPA. I wonder if the same thing happens with uh, Cafe. Maybe. Or, would it be Cafe? I don't know what you're no, I think it's Cafe ca- in Europe. I don't think it's it? Cafe here. So I don't know if you, you can get credits for that. I think we misquoted that many a time. I don't know if you can get credits for that, too. I don't know. Or if that's just EPA credits. I but don't have the slightest clue. I don't know either. So maybe, But that may be the rationale behind it. Hmm. That makes more sense, I suppose. So, is that it for this? Ferraris, man. Yeah, man. So much for buying a four eight eight. That's okay. I wasn't gonna buy one new, anyways. It's true. (laughs) Rabbit's too practical for that. He's gonna go to the pre-owned market. Except that the problem is, if they're all sold out like this, This, the the one you own is now worth more than the one you could than a brand new one. Yeah. Because you can't get a brand new one. Supply and demand, and I've got it. Can't get a brand new one. So either you buy mine now for thirty grand more than. Uh, the than a factory car is, or you wait till 2019 to get yours. 2020 Dang. to get yours. Dang it! And everyone knows hindsight's 2020. Huh? No. Huh? That was huh. super lame. Right? I know. <laughs> 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 that was really terrible. Like, you should be ashamed of yourself. It didn't make sense within the context of I what know, we were saying. But it was it, it was wasn't like, funny, it, it wasn't was clever. Like a, it was bad like a pun and I knew it pissed you off. It wasn't off. even a pun, it was I know, just terrible just... comedy. <laughs> this is not a morning news show, Robbie. This is not ABC Five. I'm, so, I'm sorry. That whole year is gonna be I'm, bad. I'm sorry. Isn't it? That whole year's I'm just sorry. gonna be filled with terrible. Looking puns. back on Yeah, I actually come to think of it, it is gonna be one of the worst years of my life. Twenty twenty. <laughs> do, do you turn thirty that year? Uh no. Oh, okay. turn. Well, wait a second. What, 2018? I'm going to turn 29 Jesus this year. Christ, Ruffy. What? <laughs> He's going to have that whole bag of race car candies There's like, gone so, before the end of the so show. Much left. Thanks, James, for sending this bag of race car candies to Robbie. Next time, just send heroin. Thanks. <laughs> it's it's not our fault you have a terrible sugar addiction. That's why I say so fit. Hey, it's something weird going on with Robbie's metabolism. I'm telling you, no he's doubt. a genetic freak. He is a genetic sugar freak. Sugar gives my metabolism a boost. Gives your metabolism. <laughs> You ever heard of skinny fat before? Maybe that's what you are. What's that? It's where you have like diabetes, but you look like you're in shape, basically. <laughs> that's probably why I'm so skinny. I probably have a tapeworm. <laughs> oh, there you go. That might that might describe it. Wow. Speaking of, you should go to our YouTube channel and uh, check out some stuff that's on there. Robbie posted up a new video of me working on my, or putting, installing my angle kit. Mad um, angle, yeah. For those that are interested. and uh, You should definitely check it out. You should sure. check it out. If you're interested in the villain's kit, I go through the pieces that are in there. Um, and then, uh, well, I assume it's not just villains. I mean, if you're doing any sort of angle mod, it's at least, it's yeah. cool to get acquainted with all the, uh, involved stuff. Yeah. All the pieces. And it, it's interesting to see what What's, actually changes the angle of the car. Yeah. And then what, you know, bottoms out and ruins all of your, like, oh, this is going to be perfect. And then you hit your frames like, ah, yeah, there was a lot of that going on. Yep. I can't use those caster. The, so those bottom A arms for the RX seven have, they unbolt. So the ball joint comes off, and you put this plate in to extend it. And I can't use the ones that add caster because it just runs into everything underneath <laughs> the car, like the front fender well. So, like, at some point, if I cut out the front fender wells, which is pretty common for drifters, yep. they'll cut them out or they'll put, like, they'll buy trailer fenders, yep. cut them in half and put them in there. Um, those are all options. They are just not options at the moment. So right. I can't well, add all that caster. Well, it's like the 242 to have any caster. I basically have to... Uh 
cut out the front part of my bumper. Yep. Cause I mean, I, I have the one side, my driver's side was perfectly set or passenger side was perfectly set up to meet exactly the length that, uh, the fa- came from the factory, 99.4 inches. And then, I, then I have the other side set up and it looks right. And I'm like, all right, cause it's good. And I measure it's like 89 and a half. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so I had to pull it like an inch forward to get everything square to the world. And then of course it's hitting the bumper. Cause that's all, you know, it's a cheap fiberglass bumper. So then I just cut that whole thing out. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting when you start changing suspension geometry, all the shit that you run into. And it doesn't help that I have a prior salvage car, which isn't perfectly straight in some places. So I was, I was really fighting that like last time I was doing my uh, alignment. What you should do, Rabbi. Just wrap what it. I would recommend. Just drift it. Just drift it. But also, you know, you could do like the drifter at home fix for that, which is like chains and posts and come along <laughs> tractors, trees. Trees. Yeah, trees. Yeah, totally. get a tree, get, get, get a tree, two trees. Big trees. Big trees. Chains. <laughs> connected to your frame. If I was going to do it, I should have done it like a bunch of years ago. Come alongs. A come along. And I then, got a few of those at work. Or get a tractor. I would suggest getting a tractor. Ooh, definitely, if the definitely, chain, definitely if the chain breaks, you'll die. Sometimes it's a, it's a risk like worth a hel- taking. Wear your helmet. Yeah. Wear your helmet and maybe like a Kevlar bodysuit. <laughs> Sounds expensive. I just, I'm just trying to help you get your alignment fixed, and I'm I just telling you where, where I your finally, I got are. everything where I wanted it now, finally. Here we are, offering him perfectly good I, it's advice. It's reasonable advice. You live in the it. country. I assume you have a tractor by now. There's surely trees no, out they, there. No, actually, the, I got gifted the tractor when I moved in. It was like, it was like getting a gun when you moved to Missouri. I mean, it's, They just give you, if you get yeah. to the border, they give you a gun. Yeah. They, they stop, when you get to the border, they say, do you have a gun in here? And if you say no, they say, here, please take this one. And it's like a box. They just say this handy yeah, thing. Yeah, they're like... Welcome to Missouri. Here's some PBR and some guns. And then you just keep going, and then you drink it and drive, because that's in Missouri. You can do you that. You can do that. So you have your gun, and you drink, and you drive. And well, no, no, you can't drive. You, the passengers can drive. I thought you could drink as the driver. Don't, don't do this. Just no, don't do it. No, the passenger can drink, you can, oh, There's no such Fairly thing. Fairly certain. In, in Missouri, there's no such thing as an open container law. There it is. But the driver can't drink. You have to be under the limit. Yeah, the driver has to be under the limit. So you can have open and containers other, in the car. You, the passengers can drink. You can have open I containers think. in the car, though. Yeehaw. Yes. Okay, just don't. Don't do that. But you can do it. You, and the only reason we whatever. can make these jokes is because we hang out in <laughs> Missouri. Yeah, we've been to Missouri. We're like semi-residents of Missouri, so don't get all offended. We both have lake houses there. It's fine. It's, it's totally, <laughs> totally fine. Well, actually, mine's my fiance's family. You just, you, you just got a lake house. Yeah, it's yeah. Me and the CEO of uh, the company you work for. Yeah. Yep. He probably has a lake house. I bet he does. Probably down the street from him. It's like Brad Pitt's house, Michael Peck's house, and then my boss's house, or my boss's <laughs> boss's house. And then, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's, we talk about the Villains Drift Kit on there, and there's some information on there about those tie rod spacers that I didn't know about. So that was, that we was learned. helpful from Andy. Yeah. And uh, Tech Nick, Nick DeBreeze, he did a article about uh, how those how those spacers work. So I appreciate that, because the internet had no Good information about how those worked. Yep. Zero information. I've read some of this, like many moons ago, I've read some of the stuff that Nick wrote. and It's good. I didn't need to know it, but it's very interesting and well thought out and written. I didn't realize that he had written all that information about drift cars. He's put a lot of stuff out there on his website. It's a pretty good resource. So I'll have to go through and check that out. But uh, yeah, definitely check that out. If you're interested in that kit or you're interested about suspension geometry for drift cars that information is there and we'll do more stuff and we're going to be at odrift collective the day before this so check out our social media for coverage on that and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the drivers and hanging out with our friends and seeing some people get rowdy yeah see what happens all that pent-up energy it's gonna be wet it's gonna get super wet there <laughs> there's no doubt Dang. there may be some wet. rain and then after that it'll be super wet so i think that's it catch you guys next week